All praise to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called the Pillars of the Earth. The Pillars of the Earth. Let's open up with the book of uh, 2nd Ezra, chapter 5, verse 17. 2nd Ezra, chapter 5, verse 17. Let's start there. 2nd Ezra, chapter 5, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Come on. Knowest thou not that Israel is committed unto thee in the land of their captivity? So now this is Salathiel asking Ezra, do you not know, knowest thou not, that Israel is committed unto thee in the land of their captivity? So Salathiel is reminding Ezra, this is the job. Do you understand? This is the job. Israel is committed unto you. Meaning you the pillar, you the leader. Go ahead. Up then and eat bread mm -hmm. and forsake us not. Come on. As the shepherd delivered his flock in the hands of cruel wolves. You see what he's saying? He says, up then, meaning get yourself together and eat bread. You understand? Meaning study this Bible. Eat bread. Okay, watch this. Let's go to the book of John. Okay? John 6. He says, up then and eat bread. Watch this thing right here. St. John, chapter 6. John chapter 6 and verse 48. Let's read that. The book of John chapter 6 verse 48. Come on. I am that bread of life. You know what? Jump up to verse 35. Read verse 35. John chapter 6 verse 35. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, mm -hmm. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Mm -hmm. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. You see what he's saying? He says, this is Christ speaking. He says, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. That's some heavy stuff right there. So when he says, up then and eat bread, what is he saying? He's saying, you know what? Teach the people about Christ. Because Christ is the foundation. You understand? Watch this. Because what we're reading here says, I am the bread of life. Could you give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8? Deuteronomy 8. Give me that thing. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse... Let's read verse 3. Deuteronomy 8 verse 3. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3. Come on. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger mm -hmm. and fed thee with manna which thou knowest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Lord doth man live. You see what he's saying? So he's letting you know what the, that bread is. That bread is the word of the Lord. That's what you're supposed to eat if you are going to be a pillar, a leader. If you understand that Israel is committed unto thee in the land of their captivity, you're going to what? You're going to get yourself together. You're going to eat bread. You're going to study this book. You understand? Because you understand, you're not studying for yourself only. Give me that in Sirach 33 verse 17. Okay? You, you understand, you're not studying for yourself. This is not just about you. Okay? Sirach 33 verse 17. Read that. You know what? Start at verse 16. Let's start at verse 16. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 33 verse 16. Go ahead. I awake up last of all. What did he say? I awaked up last of all. He says, I awaked up, meaning I was woken up last of all. Give me that in uh, 1 Corinthians 4. He says, I awaked up last of all. Okay? Because the Lord is waking us up in these last days. Last of all. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 9. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9. Come on. For I think... That God had set forth us the apostles last. What did he say? For I think that God had set forth us the apostles last. He says, for I think that God has set forth us the apostles last. That's why he says, I awake up last of all. Because the Lord will set up his apostles in the last days. After all the garbage that was pushed out in the earth. Christianity, Islam, politics, all that nonsense. The Lord says, after that, I'm going to set up my apostles. I'm going to set up my pillars, my leaders. And they're going to teach the people just judgment. They're going to teach the people the laws of God. Read that again. Verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 9. Go ahead. For I think 
that God had set forth us, the apostles, last. Come on. As it were appointed to death. As it were appointed to death. Because the work that we do, guess what? Some of us, we're going to get killed for this work. You understand? As it were appointed to death. But you know that the Lord will wake you up. You understand? The dead in Christ shall rise first. So there's no need to fear. Go ahead. As it were appointed to death. Mm -hmm. For we are made a spectacle unto the world. Come on. And to the angels and to men. We are made a spectacle unto the world and to the angels and to men. Because the people are looking at us now. You understand? You can no longer hide because you've learned this. Now you go out, you wake up your people. You understand? Watch this. Go back to where he was at now. Sirach 33 verse 16. Ecclesiastes 33 verse 16. Read. I awaked up last of all. Mm -hmm. As one that gathereth after the gape gatherers. As one that what? As one that gathereth after the grape gatherers. As one that gathereth after the grape gatherers. Who's the grape gatherers? He says, I woke up last of all as one that gathereth after the grape gatherers. Come on, keep going. By the blessing of the Lord, I profited mm -hmm. and filled my winepress like a gatherer of grapes. You, you see that thing? And filled my winepress like, the, like a gatherer of grapes. Now watch this. He says he's coming he's, he what? He says, as one that gathered after the grape gatherers. Watch this. Give me 2 Ezra chapter 9 verse 20. 2 Ezra chapter 9 verse 20. Read that. 2 Ezra chapter 9 verse 20. Come on. So I considered the world mm -hmm. and behold, there was peril because of the, because of the devices that were come into it. The devices is talking about what? Sin that came into it. Go ahead. And I saw, and it spared greatly, and have kept me a grape of a cluster of the he cluster. Says I, he says, I've kept me a grape of the cluster. Okay, come on. And have kept me a grape of the cluster, mm -hmm. and a plant of a great people. And a plant of a great people. Let's talk about Israel. Go ahead. Watch this. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. That's the two thirds. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. That's the two thirds that are prophesied that will not repent. They were born in vain. Go ahead. And let my grape be kept. The grape is the one third. Go ahead. And my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. Because we're going to go through trials and tribulations. The Lord is going to what? The Lord is going to purge impurities out of our spirits. That's what he's going into. So guess what? We are the grape gatherers. You understand? And the Lord is going to, out of those grapes that we've gathered, the Lord is going to choose the ones that are approved. The elect. You understand? That's what this is going into. Okay, go back to Sirach 33 verse 16 now. Ecclesiastes 33 verse 16. Mm -hmm. I awaked up last of all. Read. As one that gathereth after the grape gatherers, mm -hmm. by the blessing of the Lord, I profited and filled my winepress like a gatherer of grapes. Come on. Consider that I labored not for myself only, mm -hmm. but for all them that seek learning. You see what he's saying? Consider that I labored not for myself only. So all of you brothers and sisters too, you are not here to labor just for yourself. No, no, you are here to labor for all those that also seek to learn, just like you were once before, before you knew this thing. Go ahead. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, mm -hmm. and hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the congregation. You see that thing? Ye rulers of the congregation. So what is he saying? He's talking to the leaders. He that, he's addressing the leaders of the nation, the men. Okay, watch this. Let's go back now. Let's go back. Okay. Go back to 2nd Ezra 5, verse 17 again. 2nd Ezra chapter 5, verse 17. Read. Knowest thou not that Israel is committed unto thee in the land of their captivity? Israel is committed unto us in the lands of our captivity. So this is our job. You understand? This is our duty. Go ahead. Up then and eat bread. Mm -hmm. And forsake us not. Read. As the shepherd that leaveth his flock in the hands of cruel wolves. 
because that's a hireling. A shepherd that liveth his flock in the hands of crow wolves, that's a hireling. When problem comes, they run. You understand? That's not the shepherd. That's a hireling. Understand that thing. So that's what the Lord is teaching us here. That guess what? Israel is committed unto us in the lands of our captivity. That's not a small responsibility. That's a heavy responsibility right there. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Samuel. Okay, give me 1 Samuel 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8. Let's read there. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8. Read. He raised up the poor out of the dust. Come on. And lifted up the beggar from the dunghill mm. to set them among the prince, to set them among princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. Read. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. Come on. And and he had set the world upon them. Now let's read that verse again. Read verse 8 again. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. Come on. He raised up the poor out of the dust. He raised up the poor out of the dust. Now let's see who the poor is that the Lord is going to raise up out of the dust. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32. He raised up the poor out of the dust. Read that. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32. Come on. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? Mm -hmm. That the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. The poor of, the poor of his people is Zion. Zion is the poor of his people. So let's go back. 1 Samuel 2, verse 8 again. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. Come on. He raises up the poor out of the dust. Now we understand who the poor is that the Lord is raising up out of the dust. He says he raises up the poor out of the dust. Now we want to pause right there. He raises up the poor out of the dust. He raises up Israel out of the dust. Let's deal with how the Lord will do this thing. When and how. Watch this. Give me Hebrews 1 and 1. Hebrews chapter 1. When and how will the Lord do this thing? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake mm. in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So the Lord, he says, in sundry times, meaning in different times in history and in diverse manners, different manners of ways, the way he spoke unto us. He says, in time past, meaning in the past, he spake unto our fathers by the prophets. So it is today. The same thing that happened back then is happening this day. Go ahead. Hath in these last days in spoken unto days? us. Hath in these last days. Hath in these last days. Because we are in the last days right now. Hath in these last days. Come on. The last days began when the Lord, when Christ was born. That was the beginning of the last days. Okay. Come on. Hath in these last days. Spoken unto us by his son, mm -hmm. whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Come on. By whom also he made the worlds. So now Christ, the Lord, most like he spoke unto us in these last days. In, in, in sundry times, different ways, and diverse manners. You understand? So the most like God, he is going to raise up Jacob out of the dust. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Hosea 6 verse 1. Hosea 6, verse 1. Read that. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Read. Come, and let us return unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. For he hath torn, and he will heal us. For he hath torn, and he will heal us. So right now we are returning to the Most High God. You understand? He hath torn, he put us in slavery. And he will heal us because now he is speaking unto us by the prophets. Go ahead. He had smitten mm -hmm. and he will bind us up. That's when we are going to be taken out of this hell hole that we're in. Go ahead. After two days shall he revive us. After two days the Lord will revive us. Read. In the third day he will raise us up. He will what? In the third day he will raise us up. You see what he's saying? He says, after two days, he will revive us. 
in the third day, he will raise us up. That's the key word right there. He was going to raise us up in the third day. Go ahead. And we shall live in his sight. We shall live in his sight when we are in rulership. Now watch this. Give me that in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, so we can understand what Hosea is saying right here. Okay, 2 Peter 3, verse 8. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Come on. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, mm -hmm. that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Read. And a thousand years as one day. You see that thing? So one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. One day with the Lord is a thousand years to us. You understand? A thousand years, you, a thousand years to us is one day in the sight of the Most High God. Now watch this. Go back to where he was at now. Hosea 6 verse 2. Hosea chapter 6 verse 2. Read. Right? After two days will he revive us. Mm -hmm. In the third day he will raise us up. Come on. And we shall live in his sight. So now two days has gone by. You understand? The two days is making reference to what? The two days is making reference to 2,000 years has passed, has gone past. We're in the third day now. You understand? We are in the third day. 2,000 years has gone by since Christ left the earth. You understand? We are in the third day now. So what, what is the Lord teaching us? This is the day when the Lord is going to raise us up. And the Lord is raising us up already. The process has already begun. Okay? Read verse 2 again. Hosea chapter 6 verse 2. Read. After two days will he revive us. Mm -hmm. And in the third day he will raise us up. In the third we day. We are, hold on. We are in the third day right now. One day is with the Lord is a thousand years. And a thousand years to us is one day with the Lord. Right now we are in the third day. So 2,000 years has gone by. You understand? We are in the third day. And in the third day, the Lord will do what? And we, and in the no, third no. day, uh -huh. in the third day, he will raise us up. He will raise us up. We are in the third day and the Lord is raising us up. Remember when we, what we read in 1 Samuel. Go back to 1 Samuel so we don't lose the thought. 1 Samuel 2 verse 8 again. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. Go ahead. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. Stop right there. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. The poor is Israel. The Lord will raise up Israel out of the dust. When? In the third day. We are in the third day right now. Go back to Hosea now, 6, verse 2 again. Hosea chapter 6, verse 2. Come on. After two days will he revive us. Mm -hmm. In the third day, he will raise us up. Come on. And we shall live in his sight. Now watch this. Give me the book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 11. Okay. In the third day, the Lord is going to raise us up. The book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 11. Read what you got. Amos, chapter 9, verse 11. Read. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. You see what he's saying right there? He says, in that day, which day? The third day. In that day, which is the third day, the last day, because we're in the last days right now. You understand? It says, in that day, will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is falling. The tabernacle of David is the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. The tabernacle of David is the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. You understand? Come on. And close up the breaches thereof. Mm -hmm. And I will raise up his ruins. I will do what? And I will raise up his ruins. I will raise up his, his ruins in that day. Which day? The third day. The Lord is saying he's going to raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. And close up the breaches thereof. And he says, I will raise up his ruins. Come on. And I will raise up his ruins. And mm -hmm. I will build it. As in the days of old. The Lord says he's going to build the tabernacle of David as in the days of old. Because under King David, guess what? All 12 was under David. The same way all 12 was under Solomon. For eight years, we ruled all nations on earth with a rod of iron. Under King David and King Solomon. We had the kingdom of heaven on earth. So the Lord is prophesying 
Your Amos is prophesying in the spirit of Christ saying, listen, this day is going to come again. You understand? And David shall be our king, meaning what? Christ. Because Christ will be coming through that lineage of David. Watch this. Give me the book of Ezekiel real quick. Because I said something there. Ezekiel 37. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 24. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 24. Go ahead. And David my servant shall be king over them. Now this is the prophet. This is prophecy now. It says and David my servant shall. Shall. This is future prophecy. This is during the time of Ezekiel. You understand? David is dead and gone. So, obviously, he's not talking about King David per se. Read that again, verse 24. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 24. Come on. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. Mm -hmm. and, they shall, and they shall have one shepherd. You see what he's calling David? He says, they shall have one shepherd. So, he's calling David their shepherd. Go ahead. They shall also walk in my judgments. Mm -hmm. and observe my statutes and do them. So now this is prophecy. This is future prophecy. Watch this. When he says, David, my servant, shall be king over them. What is he talking about? Give me the book of Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 and verse 32. You know, start at verse 31. Luke 1 verse 31. Let's read that. Luke chapter 1 verse 31. Go ahead. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Mm -hmm. and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. Okay, come on. Verse 32. He shall be great mm -hmm. and shall be called the son of the highest. The son of the most high. Come on. And the Lord and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. You see what he's saying right there? And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. You see that part right there? He's not talking about David. He's talking about Christ. And Christ will be coming out of the seed of David, out of that lineage. Okay, come on. Read. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Stop right there. You see that thing? He's not talking about David. He's not talking about King David. The key word is says, he shall reign over the house of Jacob, which is the 12 tribes of Israel, forever. How long was King David? How long did King David rule? Give me that in 1 Kings 2 verse 11. Real quick. Okay, 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 11. Let's see how long King David ruled. Okay. 1 Kings chapter King 2 verse 2. 11. Go ahead. And the days that David reigned over Israel were 40 mm -hmm. years. Well, how, how long? Were 40 years. So David ruled over Israel 40 years. So here when he says, he shall, he shall what? He, sh he says, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Forever. David's kingdom wasn't forever. It was only 40 years. And after that, King Solomon took over. Read that again. Verse, verse 11. First Kings chapter 2 verse 11. Read. And the days that David reigned over Israel were 40 years. Mm -hmm. Seven years reigned he in Hebron. Come and on. 30, and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. So 33 years he was in Jerusalem, seven years he was in Hebron. So David's kingdom was 40 years. After that, King Solomon came. Watch this. Give me first, first Kings 11 verse 42. First Kings chapter 11 verse 42. Okay, read that. First Kings chapter 11 verse 42. Come on. And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was 40 years. Over all Israel. So just like David was ruling over all Israel, King Solomon was ruling over all Israel. Give me 2 Chronicles 6 and 6. 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and verse 6. 2 Chronicles chapter 6 verse 6. Go ahead. But I have chosen Jerusalem mm -hmm. that my name might be there. Read. And have chosen and have chosen David to be over my people, Israel. You see that thing? David was ruling over all Israel. So now let's go back now. Go back to Luke now. Luke chapter 1, verse 32. Luke chapter 1, verse 33. 
Luke chapter 1, verse 33. Go ahead. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Mm -hmm. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. You see what he's saying? And of his kingdom, there shall be, shall be no end. Because during the time when Christ was born, Christ was born in slavery. Christ was in slavery. Christ was in captivity. Because who was ruling? Rome was ruling when Christ was born. You understand? So he's not talking about during the time when Christ was born. He's talking about the second coming of the Messiah. That's what he's talking about right here. Now let's go back to Ezekiel now. 37 verse 24. So we can understand what this is saying. Read what you got. Ezekiel 37 verse 24. Come on. And David my servant shall be king over them. Mm -hmm. And they shall have, and they shall all have one shepherd. Come on. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. So now that shepherd is talking about Christ. So when he says David shall be, shall, shall be my, uh, he says, and David my servant shall be king over them, he's not talking about Christ. He's not talking about King David. He's talking about Christ. You understand? Because he comes out of that lineage. Give me Romans 1 and 3. Okay, Romans chapter 1, verse 3. Let's prove it some more, okay? In case we've got some doubting Thomases online. Romans chapter 1, verse 3. Watch this. Romans chapter 1, verse 3. Go ahead. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, mm -hmm. which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. You see that thing? Which was made of the seed, the seed of David, according to the flesh meaning he will be coming out of that lineage of King David, okay? That's what he's saying right there. Go back to Amos now. Amos chapter 9, verse 11. Now we understand better what Amos is saying right here. Read that. Amos 9, verse 11. Amos chapter 9, verse 11. Read. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen mm -hmm. and close up the breaches thereof. Come on. And I will raise up his ruins, right. and I will build, and I will build it as in the days of old. So he says he's gonna build it as in the days of old, meaning how we rule the earth during the time of King David, during the time of King Solomon, even better because we're gonna be under Christ on that day. You understand? But the Lord is saying, He says, What he will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and he will close up the breaches thereof. Before we deal with the breaches, give me the book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 16. Acts 15, verse 16. Because Luke, because Luke wrote the book of Acts. So he goes over this thing again. Watch this. Acts chapter 15, verse 16. Start of verse, start of verse 15, so we can understand the context. Read verse 15 now. Acts chapter 15, verse 15. Go ahead. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it as it is written. So you see, you see what he's saying? He's going to quote. Read that again, verse 15. Read it right. Acts chapter 15, verse 15. Go ahead. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written. He says, and to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written. He's said, telling you, I'm going to quote from the prophets. Go ahead. Watch this. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. After this, I will return. Mm -hmm. And will build again the tabernacle of David, which Wait. is fallen down. Ra, come on. And I will and I will build again the ruins thereof. Mm -hmm. And I will set it up. I will do what? And I will set it up. So he's he's quoting Amos. He's quoting Amos. It says, After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Before he's setting it up, we need to understand something. Go back to Amos 9. Amos chapter 9, verse 11 again. Okay, Amos 9, verse 11. Amos chapter 9, verse 11. Read. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Mm -hmm. And close up the breaches thereof. And do what? And close up the breaches thereof. And close up the breaches thereof. Watch this. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 58 verse 11. Isaiah 58 verse 11. He says he's going to close up the breaches thereof. Okay. 
Remember, this, he's closing up the breaches because he's repairing the tabernacle of David that is fallen down. Isaiah 58, verse 11. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 11. Read. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. Mm -hmm. Come on. And satisfy thy soul in drought. Read. And make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. We're going to be like, like a watered garden. Hold on. We are going to be like a watered garden. That goes into the garden of Eden. Go ahead. And like a spring of water. Mm -hmm. Whose waters fail not. That goes into under wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The Lord he says he's going to guide us continually. You understand? Come on. Watch this. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. And they that shall be of thee. They shall, that shall build... be of... Hold on. It says they that shall be of thee. Who's the, who's the day that shall be of us? He's talking about those that the, the, the Most High God com committed the nation of Israel to. The pillars, the leaders, the men. Read that again, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12. Come on. And they that shall be of thee mm -hmm. shall build the old waste places. Shall do what? Shall build the old waste places. Watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 5. Because Isaiah is, is talking about the same thing. He, this is one long letter. Give me Isaiah chapter 1 verse 7. Isaiah 1 verse 7. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Your country is desolate. Your country is what? Your country is desolate. Your country is desolate. What is our country? Give me Hebrews chapter 11 first. Hebrews 11. We're coming back here. We're going to go back to uh, Isaiah 1. Hebrews 11, verse 14. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 14. Come on. For they that say such things mm -hmm. declare plainly that they seek a country. They that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. You understand? We see a country. We seek a country. Jump up to verse 13. Watch, because these are, these are our foremothers now and forefathers. Read verse 13. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. These all died in faith. Our forefathers and foremothers, if you, read from, um, if you read from verse 4 down, they died in faith, meaning our forefathers and foremothers, they had great faith. They died in faith. Go ahead. These all died in faith, mm -hmm. not having received the promises. Not having received the promises. What promises is he making reference to? Watch this. Give me the book of Luke 1. Okay. Luke chapter 1. Give me Luke chapter 1 and verse 70. Let's start at verse 72. You know what? Start at verse 71. Luke chapter 1 verse 71. Come on. That we should be saved from our enemies. Mm-hmm. And from the hand of all that hate us. And from the hand of all that hate us. That's a promise right there. The Lord is promising, us, is promising us that we are going to be delivered from this hellhole. From captivity, from slavery, colonization, forced migration, apartheid, so on and so forth. Go ahead. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. You see that part right there? To perform the mercy that was promised to our forefathers. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Okay, come on. And to remember his holy covenant. Because the Lord made a covenant with our forefather Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob that he will never forsake us. Go ahead. Verse 73. Mm -hmm. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. You see that thing? The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. Read on. Come on. That he would grant unto us. He would what? That, that he would grant unto us. He would grant unto us. He will have mercy upon us. But how? He will grant unto us. Come on. That he would grant unto us. Mm -hmm. That we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies. Come on. Might serve him without fear. That's what he's going to grant unto us. That's the mercy he promised to our father Abraham. That us being delivered out of the hands of our enemies. We're going to serve him without fear. That's the promises right there. Go back now. Go back to where he was at, Hebrews 11. Okay, verse 13. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. Go ahead. 
these all died in faith, mm -hmm. not having received the promises. Their promises, that's what we just read, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies and serving the most high God without fear. Meaning no more captivity, no more slavery, no more colonization, no more oppression and depression. Okay, come on. But having seen them afar off. They saw them afar off because remember, he's going over the history of our forefathers before us. So this is thousands and thousands of years ago. You understand? They saw the promises afar off. But we today, we are in the last days. We are in the third day and the Lord is raising us up. Come on. And were persuaded of them. They were what? And were persuaded of them. Even though our forefathers saw the promises afar off, they were still persuaded of those promises that they saw afar off. What is that telling you? Our forefathers and foremothers, they had great faith. Go ahead. And were persuaded of them and mm -hmm. embraced them. They embraced those promises. Come on. And confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They, pro they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Meaning what? Without no certain country. Why? Because we would be in slavery, moving from place to, flip to place. One captivity after another. You understand? So that's what our forefathers understood. And guess what? Today... We understand that history now when we read the book of Deuteronomy to the 28th chapter. We understand that now. Go ahead. Watch this. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. We seek a country. We seek our country. Because today in South Africa, in the Congo, in Mozambique, they say, no, that's my country. That's my country. That's why they, have, they, they be saying other people coming from outside of their quote-unquote country say, oh no, those are foreigners. No, no, we are foreigners here. You understand? The quote-unquote South Africans, you are foreigners here. Why? Because we came over here during when? We left Jerusalem in 70 AD. We came over here running. This is not our country. This is the lens of our captivity where the Lord would scatter us to serve our prison sentence, to pay for our sins. You understand? And to wake up in those lands to what? To remember who we are and return back to this book, our heritage, our culture. Okay, come on. Verse 15. Mm. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, Read. they might have had opportunity to have returned. Because now our people as a people, we are not mindful of the country of where we come from. Because we don't remember who we are. Because we don't remember who we are as a nation, you understand? Our people don't know who they are. They don't know where they come from. You don't remember who you are. You're not going to remember where you come from. What happened to you? You understand? What's your culture? What's your nationality? Who's your God? So on and so You're not going to know none of that stuff. That's how our people, when they got over here, they started to assume new identities and new cultures and traditions that were not theirs. Because the Lord put upon them the spirit of forgetfulness, the spirit of deep sleep, sleeping to who they are. Go ahead. Verse 16, but mm. now they desire a better country. We desire a better country now. Now that we, re we bethink ourselves, we remember who we are. Now we desire a better country. Go ahead. That is, and heavenly. And heavenly, meaning what? Where we're going to rule all nations on earth. That's the country we desire. That's a better country. Okay, come on. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. That's the key right there. Right now, because our people, they don't want, they don't, they are not mindful of where they come from, who they are, you understand? And when we teach them on the street, they reject it. The Lord says he's ashamed of them. But when we, when we hear this word, we accept it, we receive it. The Lord says, I'm not ashamed of you because you're not ashamed of me. So it says, wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. When we confess that we desire a better country, because this is not our country. Okay, come on. For he has prepared for them a city. That's the holy city of Jerusalem. You understand? Now, give me Galatians 4 verse 26 now. Galatians 4 verse 26. Now, we are, now that we understand that we must be mindful of that country, you understand? We, would, we, we must be mindful of that country. Because we are mindful of that country, we now have an opportunity to return back to our homeland where we come from. You understand? And the Lord is not going to be ashamed to be called our God. Galatians 4, verse 26. Let's see the country, our country. 
Okay, read that. Galatians 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. Come on. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, mm -hmm. which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem, that's our motherland right there. That's the motherland that is desolate, like Isaiah says in Isaiah 1. Now let's go back to Isaiah. Okay, Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 7. He says, our country is desolate. Okay. The same country that Hebrews, the Apostle Paul was writing to the Hebrews about. You understand? Read that. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 7. Come on. Your country is desolate. Mm -hmm. Your cities are burned with fire. Our cities are burned with fire. Because guess what? During the time of Babylon, the Nilotic Ethiopians, they burned our city. You understand? Nebuchadnezzar. And the white man was helping them. Guess what? The white man also, he, that's what they did. You understand? During Sophia Town, that's what happened in the 1900s in mm South -hmm. Africa. Whenever we set up things, they would bomb the Sophia Town. D.F. Malan, he did that. He came with soldiers, they bombed, they were shooting, killing our forefathers and four, four mothers. They bombed it. What happened in the U.S. during uh, Black Wall Street? They banned it to the ground. You understand? You see, that's what they do. That's why I find it very difficult to, want to believe that all these malls, these new big malls that were burning during the looting, I find it very hard to believe that Israel did that. I find it very hard to believe that. You understand? But obviously, they have to find the boogeyman. It's always our people. You understand? And our people need to understand. As long as they don't come back to this Bible, they will continue to become a byword and a proverb among these nations that the Lord has scattered us among. Okay, come on. Strangers devour it in your presence. The strangers. Who's the strangers that devouring our homeland in our presence? That's the white men in our land. They calling themselves Jewish. Amalek. You understand? Come on. And it is desolate. As overthrown by strangers. It's been, it was overthrown by strangers. What is Isaiah prophesying about? Watch this. Give me the book of Luke 21. This is what Isaiah is prophesying about. Okay. Because what, what, um, what, what Christ, is, Christ is quoting Isaiah. Watch this. Luke 21. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Watch this. Christ is quoting Isaiah. Okay, come on. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Read. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The Israelites, come on. And shall be led away captive into all nations. Mm -hmm. Meaning slavery, and captivity, come on. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. You see that thing? They're strangers. They're strangers that Isaiah is talking about. He says, it is, it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. That's the Gentiles. That will what? That will make our land desolate. Okay, read. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until their rulership is over, which is now is beginning now, as we are waking up. You understand? Go back to Isaiah 1 verse 8 now. Something I want to deal with there. Isaiah Come chapter on. 1 verse 8. Read. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard. Mm -hmm. As a lodge in a garden of cucumbers. Come on. As a besieged city. You see that thing? It says the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard. You ever seen a cottage in a vineyard that nobody's taking care of? There's weeds growing up in there. There's rats. There's just wildlife hey, happening in there. The creeping things, the falls of the air, all manner of creeping things and beasts, they are going to be up in there. That The Lord says, that's how we are. We are like that cottage. You understand? And as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. But the future prophecy, this is what the Lord says he will do when he raises us up. Watch this. Go back to Isaiah 58. Read verse 11 again. Okay, Isaiah 58, verse 11. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 11. Read. And the Lord shall guide thee continually mm -hmm. and satisfy thy soul in drought. You shall satisfy our soul in drought because guess what? The poor in spirit. We are the poor in spirit. You understand? But now we are coming into the truth of who you are, who we are, our identity, where we come from, what is our culture and our book. Guess what? The Lord is satisfying our soul that was in drought in all these philosophies and customs of the heathens. Read. 
And make fit thy bones. And make fit our bones. How? By teaching us the commandments. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 3 real quick. We're coming back. I just want to touch on that so we can understand what he means by that. And make fit thy bones. Proverbs chapter 3. And verse, start at verse, read verse, let's start at verse 5. We're going to read down. Okay, come on. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Read. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Come on. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. And he shall direct thy paths. You will direct your paths. Come on. Be not, be not wise in thine own eyes. Mm -hmm. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Come on. Next verse. It shall be held to thy navel. You see what he's saying? The laws of God will be held to thy navel. Okay, come on. It shall be held to thy navel mm -hmm. and marrow to thy bones. That's why he it says it's going to fatten your bones. It's, it's going to be held to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. The laws of God will do that thing. Now let's go back. Isaiah 58 verse 11 again. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 11. Read. And the Lord shall guide thee continually mm -hmm. and satisfy thy soul in drought. Come on. And make fat thy bones. With the laws, come on. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. Stop right there. You see what he's saying? We shall be like a watered garden. But here in Isaiah chapter 1, it says, And the daughters of Zion, give me Isaiah 1 and 8. Read that again. We're coming back here. Don't close that. Don't close where you was at. Okay, we're coming back. Isaiah 1 verse 8. Read that. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 8. Come on. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard. You see what he's saying? The daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard. Go ahead. Watch this. As a lodge in a garden of cucumbers. You see what he's saying? As a lodge in a garden of cucumbers. It's not watered. It's not a watered garden. But watch what the Lord says he's going, he will do. This is the promise now. Go back to Isaiah 58 verse 11 once again. Come on. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 11. Read. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. Mm -hmm. And satisfy thy soul in drought. Come on. And make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. You see that thing? We're going to be like a watered garden. Come on. And like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Meaning our understanding is not going to fail. Like we read in, in, in Psalms chapter 1, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. His leaf also shall not wither. Mm -hmm. Saying the same thing in different ways. Verse 12 now. Isaiah 58 verse 12. Verse 12. Come on. And they that shall be of thee mm -hmm. shall build the old waste places. Come on. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Stop right there. He says, thou shalt what? Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. He says, we shall raise up. Who's going to do that? The pillars, the prophets, the leaders, the men. We women supporting the men 100%. So it says, thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, meaning the generations to come. We're gonna, we are raising up the, the foundation of the generations that are going to come after us. You understand? Read. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. Thou shalt be what? And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. We shall be called the repairer of the bridge. The breach. Go back to Amos 9 verse 11. We're coming back here. Amos chapter 9 verse 11. Amos chapter 9 verse 11. Come on. In, in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Mm -hmm. And close up the breaches thereof. You see what he's saying right there? And close up the breaches thereof. Because a breach, when, the wall, when you breach a wall, you understand? That means there's a partition in the wall now. There's a hole in the wall that needs to be what? That needs to be closed up. That's our job, brothers. You brothers and sisters too, in their proper order, of course, our job is to close up the breaches because there's a breach between us and the Most High God. 
You understand? There's a bridge. Watch this. To close up the bridge. Okay? Watch this. Go back. Go back. Go back to Isaiah 58 verse 12 again. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12. Come on. And they that shall be of thee mm. shall build the old waste places. Shall build the old waste places. Come on. Like we read in Isaiah 1. Read. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Read. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. The repairer of the breach. Because there is a breach between us and the Lord. You understand? Watch this. Give me Zechariah 11 verse 14. Zechariah chapter 11 verse 14. This is the breach right here. You understand? Zechariah chapter 11 verse 14. Watch Zechariah this. chapter 11 verse 14. Go ahead. Then I cut asunder mine other stuff. Mm -hmm. Even bands. Even what? That even bands. The bands is the brotherhood, the bond. Go ahead. That I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. That's the bridge right there. Because there was a split in the nation of Israel. You understand? There was a split in the nation. So that bridge... Guess what? Now we are called the repairer of the bridge. Because Christ came, he taught us the law to bring the other sheep into the fold so all 12 can be together. But for that to happen, we need to go out and wake up Israel. Judah will be sent out first. I'm jumping ahead, but I'm just painting a picture. You understand? And bring the unteach and wake up the rest of the tribes. That's how we're going to re repair the bridge. You understand? That's how we're going to repair that bridge. That Isaiah is talking about. Go back to Isaiah 58 verse 12 again. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12. Go ahead. And they that shall be of thee mm -hmm. shall build the old waste places. Go ahead. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. Read. The restorer of parts to dwell in. The restorer of parts to dwell in. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 43. We shall be called the repairer of the breach and the what? The restorer of paths to dwell in. Watch this. Give me 1 Maccabees 3, verse 43. Let's read that. 1 Maccabees, this, chapter 3, verse this 43. This is how we're going to, this is how, what Isaiah is saying when he says, the restorer of the paths to dwell in. Read that. First Maccabees chapter 3 verse 43. Go ahead. They said one to another, mm -hmm. let us restore the decayed estates of our people. You see that thing? These are our forefathers now, Judah Maccabee and his brothers. It says, let us restore the decayed estate of our people. You understand? So when it says the restorer of the past to dwell in, we're restoring the decayed estate. Our people are in a decayed estate. The mentally broken physically broken, spiritually broken, all brokenness in the nation of Israel. Families are broken. Black men don't know what, what he's supposed to do. Black men don't know what, he, what his purpose is on this earth. The black women don't know what her purpose is on this earth. That's why the families are broken. No marriages, the children are destroyed. Why? Because the prophets in the spirit of Christ, our job is to restore the decayed state of our people. Okay, read again, verse 43. First Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 43. Read what you got. He said, they said one to another, mm -hmm. let us restore the decayed estates of our people. Read. And let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. That's what we are doing right now. We are fighting for our, that's how the Lord is raising us up. He's going to raise up prophets to go out there to do what? To restore the decayed state of our people and to fight for our people, the minds. We're fighting for the souls of our people, the minds of our people, our brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, fathers and mothers. That's why we are here. You understand? Go back to Isaiah now. Okay, 58 verse 12. Now we read that. Now go back to Amos. Okay, go back to Amos. Chapter 9 verse 11. Amos chapter 9 verse 11. Go ahead. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Come on. And close up the breaches thereof. Read. And will raise up his ruins. And I will, and I will build it as in the days of old. 
and I will build it as in the days of old. Like we read during the time of David and Solomon, yes, we're going to rule all nations on earth. That the Lord, that's what the Lord is doing right now. He is raising us up in the third day. That's what's going on right now. We are living that prophecy. Don't get it twisted. Go back to Acts now, chapter 15, verse 16. Again. Acts chapter 15, verse 16. Go ahead. After this, I will return mm -hmm. and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. Right. And I will and I will build again the ruins thereof and mm -hmm. will set it up. And I will what? And I will build again the ruins thereof and mm -hmm. will set it up. And I will set it up. He says he will build again, again. When? Now in these last days. You understand? This is the that that's these are the steps towards that. You understand? It says, and I will set it up. How? Watch when will he set it up? Remember now, it says in these last days, in the third day, right? Watch this. Give me the book of Daniel 2, verse 44. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. Pay attention. Okay. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. This is how the Lord is gonna set us up. Okay. Watch this. We what you got. The book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 44. Read. And in the days of these kings, mm. shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Stop right there. In the days of these kings, these ki which kings? Jump up. Jump up to verse 40. Okay, jump up to verse 40. Daniel, chapter 2, verse 40. Go ahead. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. The fourth kingdom. So the subject matter is about the fourth kingdom. It says, in the days of these king, which king? The fourth kingdom. Which, the, which, which, which one is the fourth kingdom he's making reference to? Watch this. Keep going. Pot. Daniel chapter 2 verse 40. Come and on. the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. Mm -hmm. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, Right. And as iron breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. So now this fourth kingdom, it says, is going to be strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. Now, which kingdom is this? Give me Daniel 7. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 7. Okay, Daniel 7 verse 7. So Daniel is seeing the kingdoms that will be ruling. You understand? He's prophesying about these kingdoms that are going to rule. You understand? Starting with, um, starting with the, the, the Greeks. You understand? Then the Persians. Okay? Then the Babylonians. Then now we are dealing with the fourth kingdom. Watch this. Read that. Daniel chapter 7 verse 7. Actually, it's not you know what? I'm mixing them up. It's not starting with the Greeks. Remember, it started with what? It started with um, the Assyrians. Then he started with Babylon. So, but, but Babylon is, is starting with that. Babylon, then you've got Persia, then you've got Greece, then you've got Rome. So that's their order. But he's, make, he's starting with Babylon here. You understand? Let's jump up at the chapter. Jump up to verse... Hmm, read verse 3. Okay, read verse 3. Daniel chapter 7 verse 3. Go ahead. And four great beasts came mm -hmm. up from the sea. Read. Diverse one from another. Diverse one from another. Come on, next verse. The first was like a lion. The first was like a lion. Come on. And had eagle's wings. Meaning they were going to conquer. Eagle's wings. Because it took about the wingspan. The amount of countries is going to conquer. Read. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. Mm -hmm. And it was lifted up from the earth. Read. And made stand upon the feet as a man. Read. And a man's heart was given to it. That's when it fell. So now the first was like a lion. That's Babylon. That's the symbol of by ancient Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar. Lion. Come on. Next verse. And, be, and behold, another beast. A second like to obey. Like to a bear. The bear represented Persia. Go ahead. Read. And it raised up itself on the side. On one side. It raised up itself on one side. Let's talk about Persia. Because Persia was more powerful than the media empire. You understand? It was media than Persia. Go ahead. 
and it raised up itself on one side. Mm -hmm. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. Come on. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Go ahead. Next verse. Verse 6. After mm. this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, Red. which had which had upon the back of it four wings like a fowl. Come on. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. So now this this is the leopard represents the Greeks. Okay, in the history, Alexander, the so-called great, was what was likened unto a leopard. Okay. It says, and the back of it had four wings of a fowl, and the beast had four heads, meaning the four generals that Alexander, when he died, he parted his kingdom among those four generals. You understand? So keep going. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. After this, I saw in the night visions. Yes, if you want to know about this history, if you want to know about this history right here, just there's a class online called Cleans in the Temple, part one and part two goes into this history. So I'm not going to go into it. Go ahead. Verse 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, mm -hmm. dreadful and terrible. Come on. Strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. Right. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it that were before it, and it had ten horns. So now this fourth beast right here is going into what? Is going into the Roman Empire. Okay, because after the Greeks came Rome. So Rome is the fourth beast. But watch this. Now it says it what it had great iron teeth, meaning what? Great military. It had a great military might. You understand? And it says, and stamp the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Now, this right here, it goes into what? It goes into the United States of America. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Second Ezra. Okay, give me Second Ezra real quick. I'm dealing with this with what we read in Daniel 2, verse 44, when it says, um, the fourth kingdom. And verse 40, verse, verse 40 says, the fourth kingdom, verse 44 goes into what it says in the days of these kings you understand watch this second Ezra. so i'm just clarifying that thing i'm not moving fast on this um i'll dedicate a class on this thing okay second Ezra 12 second Ezra chapter 12 and verse 30 no read chapter 11 verse 39 let's read that first chapter 11 verse 39 because Ezra this goes into this thing come on second Ezra chapter 11 verse 39 Mm -hmm. Art not thou it that remainest of the four beasts? Of the what? Of the four beasts. You see what he's saying? He says, Art not thou it that remainest of the four beasts, not the fourth kingdom we read in Daniel? Read. Whom I made to reign in my world. Come on. That the end of their times might come to them. So now Ezra is prophesying about the fourth beast. But he's saying this fourth beast, the end of their time is going to come through them. Meaning what? The end of days is going to come through, is going to happen when this fourth beast is ruling. But wait a minute. During the time of Rome, when Rome fell in 193 AD, that was not the end of the world. No. So Ezra is prophesying here. You understand? Meaning what? This fourth beast will, will come back in the last days. And rule again. Guess what? That period is called the Renaissance. When the white man came back into power in the earth. During 1453. During the Renaissance. You understand? That's when they came back into power. In 1776, they came out of Britain. They called themselves the United States of America. Go ahead. Next verse. Read. Verse 40. Mm -hmm. And the fourth came. Come on. And overcame all the beasts that were past. Read. And had power over the world with great fearfulness. So now this is a, this fourth beast, which is now goes, this goes into America now. Okay. This fourth beast is that he had power over the, of the world with great fearfulness. Meaning ruling the kings of the earth with, with what? Intimidation. Go ahead. 
and had power over the world with great fearfulness read and over the whole compass of the earth mm. with much wicked oppression read and so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit with deceit it says he's ruling the earth it says what and over all over the whole compass of the earth because rome wasn't ruling the whole compass of the earth during its time but america does america is ruling over the whole compass of the earth the whole earth i don't care whether it's china or india america has influence in all the nations on earth you understand now jump down jump down to verse 44 okay verse 44 mm -hmm. the highest also hath looked upon the proud times read and behold they are ended Mm -hmm. and his abominations are fulfilled read and therefore appear no more thou eagle thou what no th thou eagle thou eagle so Ezra is telling us the symbol of this fourth beast because daniel it was not explained to him but Ezra, the lord gave understanding to Ezra the symbol of the fourth beast he says appear no more thou eagle what is it what is the symbol of america the eagle what was the symbol of spain the eagle what was the symbol of france germany great britain spain the eagle you understand so he was going beyond during he was going beyond rome but the same race of people that ruled during the time of rome is the same race of people that came back in 1453 now they are ruling the whole earth okay come on which their symbol is the eagle go ahead they are ended mm -hmm. verse, verse 45 come on and therefore appear no more thou eagle Red. know thy horrible wings mm -hmm. know thy wicked feathers the wicked know feathers thy... go... hold on the wicked feathers goes into their military go ahead know thy wicked feathers mm -hmm. know thy wick know thy malicious heads mm -hmm. meaning know democratic thy... They say they are democratic and republican. They say democratic meaning goes into um, we are in God we trust. They say they are a God fearing nation. Democratic meaning what politics? You understand? Come on. No, they hurtful claws. Their claws actually the wicked feathers goes into wing, the wingspan. Their rulership over all the earth or their powerful influence over everybody on earth. Their claws goes into their military. Go ahead. No, all thy vain body, meaning their whole citizens, the nation of Edom. Go ahead. That that all the earth may be refreshed mm. and may return, being delivered from thy violence. Come on. And that she may hope for the judgment and mercy of him that made her. You see what he's saying right there? So now let's go back. Let's go back to Daniel. Okay. Daniel chapter 7. And verse, verse uh, 7 again. Read Daniel 7 verse 7 again. Daniel chapter 7 verse 7. Read. After this, I saw in the night visions, mm -hmm. and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, Come and on. strong exceedingly, mm -hmm. and it had great iron teeth. Read. It devoured and break in pieces, Read. and stamped the residue with the feet of it. Mm -hmm. and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had 10 horns it had 10 horns 10 horns 10 these 10 horns goes into the european union okay come on i considered the horns and mm -hmm. behold they came up among them another little horn so now these 10 these horns when it says i considered the 10 the horns the horns is the 10 horns in verse 7 which is the European Union. It says, I considered the horns and behold, they came up among them another little horn. This little horn goes on to America. The little horn is the United States of America because it came out of Britain. Okay, come on. 1776, right. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. So these three horns, hold on, it says, and it says what? And it says, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Write this down. Okay. It's talking about Spain, France, and Germany. 
Spain, France, and Germany. You understand? No, no. Actually, it's Spain, France, and Britain. Spain, France, and Britain. Spain, France, and Britain. Because America came out of Britain. Okay, come on. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man mm -hmm. and a mouth speaking great things. The, so the eyes of a man goes into what? In their industrial revolution, their inventions, their science and all of that. It goes into that. Now, give me the book of Revelation 17. Mm, I didn't want to go into this. Give me Revelation 17, uh, verse 13. Revelation chapter 17, verse 13. Come on. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So the, these that have one mind is talking about the EU, the ten horns. The ten horns have one mind. They all agree as one and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Meaning what? The EU supports America. So in the days of these kings, the EU and America ruling because they, they work together and they rule the earth together. Watch this. Now let's go back to Daniel. Daniel 2, okay, verse 40. Read that. Daniel chapter 2, verse 40. Come on. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. Meaning what? Military. Now America has got nuclear weapons. So is that. So does the EU. They are doing space travel. So on and so forth. Come on. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, mm -hmm. and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Now, let's jump down to verse 44 now, because that's the part I wanted to get to. Read verse 44 again. Verse 44. Mm -hmm. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Stop right there. Now, this is the part we wanted to get to. It says, and in the days of these kings, which kings? The ten horns and the beast that they supported by the ten horns. America and the EU. Okay, read that part again. Daniel chapter 2 verse 44. Read. Right. And in the days of these kings mm -hmm. shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. In the days of these kings, remember, America and Europe, in, the, in Europe, you know, they are ruling the earth. But these other nations, Saudi Arabia, G uh, Germany, France, and so forth, Russia, um, Japan, and India, they support them. They are in bed with them. So it's not just going into America. But these are the main ones that is explaining it because that's the extension of the fourth beast. Mainly talk about them and they have allies supporting them. Okay, read verse 44 again. Daniel chapter 2 verse 44. Read. And in the days of these kings, mm. shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. The God of heaven, while these kings are ruling, guess what the Lord says he will do? He will set up a kingdom. Remember what we read in the book of Acts. Because I know some of you forgot already. Go back to Acts 15 verse 16. So we don't lose the thought. Okay. Acts 15 verse 16. Watch this. Acts chapter 15 verse 16. Read. Right. After this, I will return. Mm -hmm. And will build again the tabernacle of David. Which is fallen down. Come and on. I will build again the ruins thereof. And I will set it up. When will the Lord set this kingdom up? Go back to Daniel 2 verse 44. Daniel chapter 2 verse 44. Read. And in the days of these kings shall mm. the God of heaven set up a kingdom. You see that thing? That's talk about the third day. Who will be ruled? Who is the Gentile nation that will be ruling in the last days? Esau, Edom. If you read 2 Ezra 6 verse 7 through 9. So here it says, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. That's what's going on right now. That's what we're, we just read in the book of Acts. Okay, come on. Which shall never be destroyed. We shall never be destroyed. This kingdom that the Lord is setting up right now with us, guess what? It will never be destroyed. We're going to rule forever. Go ahead. Which shall never be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And the kingdom shall not be shall not be left to other people the, the, the kingdom that's coming is not going to be left in in the hands of the other nations like what's going on right now that's when thy kingdom come they will be done in earth as it is in heaven that's when that scripture will come to pass go ahead 
but it shall break in pieces mm-hmm. and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. We're going to consume all these kingdoms and we're going to rule them with a rod of iron forever. Now, watch this. Remember, we read, go back now to Amos. Okay, give me, give me First Samuel. No, no, go back to First Samuel 2 verse 3. Remember, we, 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 we went here to find out when would the Lord set this up? Now, in the third day. Okay, the Lord is setting this up in the third day. Okay, 1 Samuel 2, verse 8 again. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. Go ahead. He raised up the boar out of the dust. Read. And lifted up the beggar from the dunghill mm-hmm. to set them among princes mm. and to make them inherit the throne of glory. Read. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. So now he says he raised up the poor out of the dust. You understand? We went into the when. Let's deal with the how. Give me Malachi 4 verse 4. This is how the Lord is going to do this thing. Set up this kingdom while these kings are ruling. Okay, watch this. Malachi 4 verse 4. Malachi chapter 4 verse 4. Come on. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Mm -hmm. which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel. Read. The statutes and judgments. So the first thing the Lord wants us to remember is what? We must remember the law of Moses. That's why Deuteronomy 28 is how our people are waking up because we are going into the law. You understand? The judgments of breaking those laws, which is the curses. You understand? Read. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So the Lord is saying how he's going to do this. He says, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Before the second coming of Christ, he says, I'm going to send Elijah. I'm going to send Elijah unto you in this, in the third day. He says, I'm going to send Elijah. What will Elijah do in the third day? Read. Come on. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. That's what Elijah will do. Elijah in the third day, how he's going to raise us up, the Lord will send Elijah and Elijah will turn the heart of the fathers to the children. The heart of the fathers is this Bible right here. This Bible is the heart of our forefathers. He will turn it to the children. That's us. Read. And the heart of the children to their fathers. And the heart of the children the children's heart will be turned back to their forefathers. That's why we have to teach them about King David, Moses, John, James, King Solomon, Joshua, so on and so forth, Nehemiah, okay, Nahum, Habakkuk, so on and so forth. Come on. Lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. Lest I come and destroy this earth. So the Lord is not going to come and smite the earth with the curse until Israel is sealed with the laws of God. Give me Zechariah 12, verse 7. Okay, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. This is how the Lord is going to set up this kingdom in the days of these kings ruling over us in these last days. Okay, come on. Zechariah 12, verse 7. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. Read. And the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, Mm -hmm. that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. You see what he's saying right there? The Lord is saying he's going to raise Judah first. He's going to raise Judah first. That's why when you go to the streets, who do you find? Judah. You understand? The so-called Bantus, the so-called Negroes. Judah right there. Okay, read again. Verse 7. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. Come on. The Lord also shall save the tent of Judah first. Read. That the glory of the house of David mm-hmm. and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do Come not on. magnify themselves against Judah. So the Lord says he's going to wake up, he's going to wake Judah first. He's going to wake Judah first. Once Judah wakes up, give me Deuteronomy 33 verse 7. Okay, this is what will happen. What, this is what's going to, these are the shock waves that are going to be sent throughout the earth when Judah wakes up. Watch this. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 7. Read. And this is the blessing of Judah. Mm-hmm. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. 
the voice and of bring Judah. Him. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. It says, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. The voice of Judah. You understand? Judah will go out to the streets and wake the people up. That's how the Lord, that's how the Lord is going to set it up in the days of these kings. He will send Elijah. You understand? Elijah will turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Once the children get hold of this Bible, guess what Judah will do? Because he's going to be the first child to wake up. Once Judah gets hold of this, Judah will go to the street corners and wake up the rest of the tribes. That's what's going on right now. Read again, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 7. Go ahead. And this is the blessing of Judah. Mm -hmm. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. Come on. And bring him unto his people. Stop right there. It says, once Judah gets hold of this Bible, Judah will go to the street corners and Judah will be brought to his people. In order for Judah to know, to bring this word to the people, Judah must know who Judah's people are. Judah must know that thing. You understand? Come on. That his hands be sufficient for him. Meaning the Lord is going to give Judah enough info. He's going to help Judah with the resources to understand the, what this Bible and the resources needed to bring understanding to our people. Go ahead. Let his hands be sufficient for him. Mm -hmm. Be thou and help to him from his enemies. And be thou and help to him. The Lord is going to be and help to Judah from his enemies because Judah is going to help his brethren. Watch this. This is how Judah is going to be brought to his people. This is how Judah will know. Give me Ezekiel 37 verse 15. This is how Judah is going to bring, this is how the Lord is going to make sure that Judah is brought to his own people, meaning Judah will know who his people are. Ezekiel 37 verse 15. Let's read that. Come on, come on. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 15. Go ahead. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, mm -hmm. Moreover, thou son of man, come on, take thee one stick and mm -hmm. write upon it. For Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Read. Then take another stick and write upon it. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and mm -hmm. for all the house of Israel, his companions. So now what we're reading here is the Lord is saying, listen, make up a sign that shows the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what the Lord is commanding Ezekiel here. That's the same thing we are doing today. What Ezekiel, Ezekiel was walking around with the 12 tribe sign when he went to teach. Guess what we are doing today? We are doing the same thing. You understand? Read. And join them one to another into one stick. Mm -hmm. And they shall become one in thine hand. That's what we have today. We have the 12 tribes chart. You understand? Judah and his companions, which is Benjamin and Levi, and Ephraim and his companions, which is the rest of the tribes, northern kingdom. And he says, they shall join them together unto one stake, and they shall be one in thine hand. Now we have the 12 tribes chart representing all 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? With our God-given names, with our slave names on the right. Okay, come on. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. What? Whoa, hold on. Read that part again. When the what? Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 18. Come on. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, say. Mm -hmm. Come on. Will thou, will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? You see what he's saying? He says, when, and when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, say. Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? So, because that's why we get these questions on the street. Can you explain the chart? Because I don't see how, you know, the Mexicans, uh, the so-called Mexicans is, is Issachar. I don't get that. How, you know, Native American Indians is dead. So they are asking the questions because why? It's Bible prophecy. Ezekiel was walking around with this. Guess what? We also, we walking around with it. You understand? When he went to teach, because our people was bugged out. Today, our people are more bugged out. So that's the same thing we are doing today. But the key here says, when the children of thy people, go back to Deuteronomy 33 verse 7. Watch this. We read it earlier on in Deuteronomy 33 verse 7. Let's read it again. Okay. 
Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 7. Read. And this is the blessing of Judah. Mm -hmm. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. Come on. And bring him unto his people. Stop right there. And bring Judah to his people. Now go back to Ezekiel 37. Okay. Verse 18 again. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 18. Mm -hmm. And when the children of thy people when they shall what? speak. And when the children of thy people. When the children of your people. Remember it says. And bring him unto his people. So Judah will know where to go to teach his people the laws of God and who they are. That's why we travel to the places we travel to because Judah knows where his people are. You understand? And when Judah gets there, Judah expounds unto them the scriptures and give them the sense. So when they leave, when they read the Bible now, they're looking at the Bible with new eyes. You understand? Because the children of Judah's people will come and ask the questions because the spirit bear witness their spirit bear witness with this Bible. They know that they are Israel. Go back and now Ezekiel 37 verse 19 now. Come on. Ezekiel 37 verse 19. Read. Say unto them, mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord God. Read. Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is mm -hmm. in the hand of Ephraim. Read. And the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, mm -hmm. even with the stick of Judah, and Read. make them one stick. And they shall be, and they shall be one in mine hand. Ray, come on, verse twenty. Verse twenty. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. That's why we have the hem signs. It says, and the stick, and the sticks, meaning the sticks that will be representing the twelve tribes, whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. Meaning our people, when they come to camp, they're going to see the 12 tribe sign. They're going to see that. They're going to be able to identify themselves in that sign. That's some heavy stuff right there. Watch this. Remember what we read in, 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 in Zechariah 12 verse 7? Because the Lord says he's going to what? He's going to set it up in the days of these kings. Watch this. Give me Acts 13 verse 44. Acts. Acts 13 verse 44. Because... Right now, we are in the Acts of the Apostles. You understand? The Acts of the Apostles, they never ended. You understand? It's still in full effect. Understand that thing. Watch this. Acts 13, verse 44. Read that. Acts 13, verse 44. Mm -hmm. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. That's what we're seeing right now. You understand? When we go to camp. Okay, come on. Read. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, mm -hmm. they were filled with envy. Meaning that, ad, meaning when it says when the Jews saw the multitudes, just yeah, last, last week, Saturday, when the people came to hear the word, there were those Jews that were filled with envy when they saw the people coming to hear the word of God. And when they came, they were trying to take away the word that was sown in their hearts. It's because of envy. You understand? Because the envy is they wish they could be the one doing it, but they are not doing it. So that's where the envy comes in. Read again, verse 44. Acts chapter 13, verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Mm-hmm. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. Read. And spake against those things which were spoken by Paul. Come on. Contradicting and blaspheming. You can't make this stuff up. That's the same thing that was happening at camp. Because they were trying to contradict and blaspheme what was coming out. Because they were what? They were filled with envy. They didn't want the scriptures to come out. So that's why whenever the crowds come in, there will always that wicked Negro and wicked Negress that will come because they are filled with envy to try to disturb the listeners. That's the same thing that was happening back then during the book of Acts is happening today because the book of Acts is still in full effect. You understand? Watch this. Acts chapter 17 verse 2. Okay. Acts chapter 17 verse 2. Read. And Paul... As his manner was, mm -hmm. went, 
went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Because the, the Jews that are filled with envy, they hate it when we read out the Bible. When they ask us questions, we go into the book, they hate that. They say, no, I want to hear what you think. You understand? Now jump down to verse 5. Watch this. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. But the Jews, which believe not, they did moved believe. with envy. Hold on. So the Jew, now the Apostle Paul, now he's been made clear. He's been clarifying here in Acts 17. He says, but the Jews, which believe not, moved with envy. So those Jews in Acts 13 verse 45... That was moved with envy. It is because they did not believe. That's why they were moved with envy. Because if they believed, they would go to the street corners and wake up the nation. But they are not doing that. So they are moved with envy because they don't believe. They are not, they are not doing anything about what is written in this book. Okay, come on. Acts chapter 17, verse 2. Go ahead. Acts chapter 17, verse 5. Right. But the Jews which believed not, moved mm. with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort. Meaning what? Evil Negroes. Those that did not believe that moved with envy, they took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort. You understand? Low lives. Go ahead. And gathered a company mm -hmm. and set all the city on an uproar. So they wanted, they got the people, uh, they wanted the people to go against the apostles when they were teaching. You understand? Go ahead. And, assault, and assaulted the house of Jason mm -hmm. and sought to bring them out to the people. You see what they were doing? They went out to the nobles. You understand? They, they, they assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. They wanted the people to stone the, the apostles. That's what they were doing. Because of what? Hatred of what's written in this book. That's why. So don't be surprised, brothers. Go ahead. Verse 6. Verse 6. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. You see what they are saying? These that have turned the world upside down uh, come hither also. Because understand, brothers, we are turning the world right side up. Right now, the world is out of order. We are turning it right side up. And wicked Negroes, they are going to hate that. You understand? They are going to hate that thing. Now go back to Acts 13, verse 45 again. Acts 13, verse 45. Mm -hmm. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. Come on. And speak against those things which were spoken by Paul, right. contradicting and blaspheming. Watch this. Come on. Verse 46. And right. Paul and Barnabas waxed bold. Meaning and said, what? They, hold on. They were not afraid. They waxed bold. They said, listen, the mission is a go. Go ahead. And Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, right. it was necessary that the word of God should first should what should first should what that the word of God should first should first should first should first should first hold this go back to Zechariah 12 verse 7 that the word of God should first okay Zechariah 12 verse 7 Zechariah chapter 12 verse 7 go ahead the Lord also shall save the tent of Judah first Mm -hmm. that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Okay, read that first part, that part of the verse, the first part, I missed that. Read that again. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 7. Mm -hmm. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. You see that part right there? The, world, the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Judah first. So what the apostles, when they were teaching, they understood this prophecy. You understand? Go back to Acts now. 13 verse 46 again. Acts chapter 13 verse 46. Read. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, mm -hmm. it was necessary that it the was word what? of God. It was necessary. It was necessary. 
it was necessary because of what the prophets in Zechariah 12. Go ahead. It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Meaning what? Southern kingdom. Okay, come on. The Jews in verse 45. Read. But seeing he put it from you. Because they were rejecting the, the apostles. Come on. And judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Meaning what? We're going to go to northern kingdom now. You understand? Watch this. Acts chapter 11 verse 18. Acts 11 verse 18. Acts chapter 11 verse 18. Read. When they heard these things, they held their peace mm -hmm. and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also, then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. So now he's saying this, he's saying the same thing that we just read in Acts chapter, Acts chapter 13. So it says, When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life meaning what they were coming back in they were being brought back into the fold like it says in john 10 go ahead verse 19 mm -hmm. now they which were scattered abroad Come upon on. the persecution that arose about stephen traveled as far as Phoenix mm -hmm. and cyprus, cyprus and antioch greece preaching the word to none but unto those but unto the Jews only. You see what he's saying? He says they were preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Why? Because they understood Zechariah 12 verse 7. But this scripture is twofold. It also goes into Matthew 15 verse 24 when he says, I only come but, I'm only sent but unto the lordship of the house of Israel. It goes into the same thing. But in this point, the contextually, it goes into what? The prophecy of Zechariah 12 verse 7. You understand? Galatians 2 verse 7. Watch this. Galatians 2 verse 7. So now, because remember, the apostle Paul is from which kingdom? Give me that in Romans 11 verse 1. Romans chapter 11 verse 1. Romans chapter 11 verse 1. Come on. I say then, hath God mm -hmm. cast away his people? Right. God forbid. Mm -hmm. For I also am an Israelite. Of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So he's telling you that the kingdom is coming from, and uh, he says, of the seed of what? He says, I'm also I'm an Israelite. He's telling you he's an Israelite, he's a Jew. Of the seed of Abraham, now he's going to get specific of which tribe he comes from, the tribe of Benjamin. Okay? That's why they went to the Jews first, because of Zechariah. After that, what happened? Give me Galatians 2 verse 7. Okay, because this is the ministry that was given to the Apostle Paul. Galatians 2 verse 7, read that. Galatians chapter 2 verse 7. Mm -hmm. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Read. For he that wrote effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision. The same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. So the apostle Paul is saying that what the apostle Peter was committed the gospel to the circumcision, which is the Jews, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And the apostle Paul was given the gospel of the uncircumcision, which is what? Northern kingdom, which were called Gentiles. Watch this. Now remember, Judah will go out, you understand? Judah and his companions, which is Benjamin and Levi. Because Christ went out first to teach with the 12. And then the, the apostle Paul came and all that. He was focusing on what? Northern kingdom. To deal with what? To deal with the rest of the tribes. Because Judah came first, which is Christ. And then his, and his companions. And then they went to teach the scattered Israelites, which is the rest of the tribes. That's what we're doing today. You understand? The same thing we're doing today. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 9 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1. Because what the apostle Paul is going into is the prophecy that we're reading in Isaiah that will first be started by our Lord and Savior, the Christ. Isaiah 9 verse 1. Read that. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1. Go ahead. Nevertheless, 
the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. Mm -hmm. When at the first, he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon Ray. and the land of Naphtali. Come on. And the sea beyond Jordan in no, Galilee. No. And afterward, did more grievously. Okay, come on, read that. And afterward, did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea. That's the Sea of beyond, Galilee. The sea is the Sea of Galilee. Go ahead. Beyond Jordan, mm -hmm. in Galilee of the nations. In Galilee of the nations. Okay. Those nations, we, we, the names of those nations is mentioned. Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. Okay, that's Northern Kingdom. Come on. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Mm -hmm. That they... Do, that they, they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. Because Christ went over there to teach them. Let's see if that prophecy was fulfilled. Watch this. Matthew 4 verse 12 now. Matthew chapter 4 verse 12. Come on. Matthew chapter 4 verse 12. Now when Jesus had heard that John was caused into prison, mm -hmm. he departed into Galilee. Come on. Northern kingdom. He went into northern Israel. Read. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali. That's northern kingdom now. Come on. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Read. The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. By the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. So oh, Christ went over there because this was prophecy in Isaiah. Okay, come on. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. Because Christ went over there to teach them. You understand? Come on. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Watch this. Give me Luke 177. Luke 1, verse 77. Luke chapter 1, verse 77. Read. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Mm -hmm. Come on. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. So that day spring is talking about Christ. The day spring on from on high has visited us. That's Christ. Go ahead. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death mm -hmm. to guide our feet into the way of peace. That's what Christ did. He went over there to northern Israel to teach them. You understand? He went over there to northern Israel to bring them into the fold. John 10 real quick. Okay, this is the fulfillment of that. Okay, John chapter 10, verse 16. Read that. John chapter 10, verse, verse 16. Come on. And other sheep I have, mm -hmm. which are not of this fold. Stop right there. Which are not of what? Which are not of this fold. Which are not of this fold, meaning his fold. Southern kingdom. Go ahead. Them also I must bring. Mm-hmm. And they shall hear my voice. And they shall be one fold. And one, one nation. Shepherd. One nation and one shepherd. You understand? He's talking about northern kingdom here. That he's going to bring them back into the fold. John 4. Come on. John chapter 4 verse 7. John chapter 4 verse 7. Come on. There cometh a woman of Samaria to mm -hmm. draw water. Jesus sent unto her, give me to drink. Read. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Read. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, mm -hmm. How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? Which I am a woman of Jews, Samaria. Which I am a woman of Samaria. Go ahead. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now, this woman of Samaria, okay, give me Isaiah 7 verse 8. We're going to read 8 and 9. 
Okay, so we can find out the identity of this woman that Christ went to, which is what part of John 10, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. You understand Luke 177 down. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 8. Mm -hmm. For the head of Syria is Damascus. Come on. And the head of Damascus, and the head of Damascus is resin. Mm -hmm. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken that it be not a people. That's when Ephraim was going to be what? Uh, the Lord was going to cast them off. Okay, but watch this. Come on. Verse 9. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. The head of Ephraim is Samaria. Go ahead. And the head of Samaria is Ramaliah's son. Pekka, come on. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. So now what now we understand who the Samaritan woman is. She's from the tribe of Ephraim. She's an Ephraimite. So she's been brought into the fold as part of the one. Remember what the apostle calls, remember what Christ did. Christ first went to the Jews. You understand? Then after that, he went to the Gentiles. What did the apostles do after he came, after Christ left? They went to Southern Kingdom. And after that, they went to Northern Kingdom. That's what they did. You understand? They did that because give me John 1. Hmm. Give me John chapter 1 real quick. John chapter 1 and verse 11. Watch this. John chapter 1 verse 11. Come on. He came unto his own. His what? He came unto his own. His own. What is his own making reference to? His fold. His fold. Go back to John 10 16 so we don't lose the thought. He came unto his own. John 10 verse 16. Watch this. John chapter 10 verse 16. Come on. And other sheep I have, mm -hmm. which are not of this fold. We see that part right there? Which are not of this fold. He came unto his own southern kingdom. You understand? Based on the prophecy of Zechariah 12 verse 7. Go back to where he was at now. John 1 verse 11. John chapter 1 verse 11. Read. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. You see that part right there? He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Now, give me the book of uh, Mark 831. Mark 831. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Mark 8 verse 31. Mark chapter 8 verse 31. Come on. And he began to teach them. Mm -hmm. that the son of man must suffer many things because he was going to be, be crucified tortured and crucified go ahead and be rejected of the elders mm -hmm. and of the chief priests and Read. scribes and be killed and after three days rise again so you see who rejected christ the scribes the pharisees the elders they rejected christ you understand so because of that when he says he came to his own and his own received him not, not all Israel rejected Christ. You understand? Not all of them rejected Christ, but it was only the chief priests, the elders and the scribes, because he was taking what bread out of their mouth, because they were eating of the people. They were living off the people from the tithes and offerings. When Christ came, he says the Levitical priesthood is no longer in, 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 or in, is no longer applicable now that I'm here. You understand? That's why they rejected it. But give me John 8, 31. So we don't lose the thought. Okay, John 8, verse 31. Read that. John chapter 8, verse 31. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus to the Jews which believed on him. To those Jews. To those Jews which believed on him. So were those Jews that believed on Christ. You understand? There were those Jews that believed on Christ. Not all Israel rejected Christ. It was only the scribes, the Pharisees, and the elders. First Peter's two. Watch this. First Peter's. Okay. You brothers that are going to be teaching on this deed, you better take heed to this class right here. Okay. Watch this. First Peter's two verse five. Come on. First Peter chapter two verse five. Read. Ye also as lively stones mm -hmm. have built up a spiritual house. Come on. And holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. 
Watch this. Next verse. Come on. Wherefore also it is contained in the scriptures. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, mm -hmm. elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. He that believeth on this chief cornerstone shall not be confounded. You understand? They are not going to what? They are not going to stumble at this word. He's quoting Isaiah. Give me Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28 verse 16. Read that. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16. Go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a foundation, a stone, mm -hmm. a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Shall not be confounded. Go back to First, uh, first Peter 2. First Peter 2 verse 7 now. Watch this. First Peter chapter 2 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Unto you therefore, which believe he is precious. So unto us that believe on Christ, he is precious. Go ahead, come on. Unto them, but unto them which be disobedient. Mm -hmm. The stone which the builders disallowed. You see that part right there? The stone which the builders disallowed. That's what we read in Mark 8, 31. The apostle Peter is repeating the same accounts. Okay, come on. He's explaining that. Read. The stone which the builders disallowed. Mm -hmm. The same is made the head of the corner. The same is made the head of the corner. He's the chief cornerstone. He's the leader. He's our king. Okay, he, was, he is our commander in chief. Go ahead. And a stone of stumbling. Mm -hmm. You see, Christ and was a, a stone of... Hold on. Christ was a stone of stumbling to the elders, the chief priests and the scribes. Read. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. A rock of offense. Come on, read. Even to them which stumble at the word. Those that don't keep the commandments, read, because the scribes and Pharisees, they were not applying. Read. Being disobedient. Mm -hmm. Whereunto also they were appointed. They were appointed to be what? To be a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. You understand? They were appointed to be disobedient. They were appointed, meaning it was written that they were going to do that thing. You understand? Now, go back to John 4. John chapter 4, verse 10 now. This is what Christ is saying now. Watch, the, listen what Christ says. Because we went over there to explain John 1, verse 11, Mark 8, 31, and 30, Mark 8, 31. When you understand? So what we're reading in 1 Peter 2, verse 7 down, it goes with that. So put that in your, in your Bible, in your notebook, whatever you must do. John 4, verse 10. Come on. John chapter 4, verse 10. Read. Jesus answered and said unto her, mm -hmm. If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. Come on, read. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Mm -hmm. From whence then hast thou that living water? Where do you so from so where do you have this living water? Okay. It says you have nothing to draw water with. So where do you have now? It says, Whence then hast thou that living water? How do you have the will living water if you have nothing to draw with? Watch this. Come on. Are thou greater than the, our father Jacob? You see what she's asking? Are you greater than our, our father? Because she, what, she, what did she understand? Read verse 9. This is what this woman understood, this Ephraimite. John chapter 4 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, Read. which am a woman of Samaria? Mm -hmm. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans because she understood the history in Zechariah 11, 14. She understood the history in 1 Kings 12. She understood that history. You understand? Come on. Read verse 12 now. John chapter 4 verse 12. Mm-hmm. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself 
and his children and his cattle. Do you see what she's asking? So she understood something that many people today, they don't understand in the Christian church. Now, give me Ezekiel 37, 22 now. Ezekiel 37, verse 22. Ezekiel 37, verse 22. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 22. Remember what Judah will do. Don't forget the thought. Remember what Judah, Judah will go out. Judah will have the 12 tribes sign. You understand? All the teaching is so people can see what's going on. But most importantly, they will have the, we will have what? We will have the sign of the tribes. You understand? So we can show the people that the Lord, the spirit of Christ is bringing all 12 together as one. Okay? Watch this. Ezekiel 37, 22. Read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 22. Read. And I will make them one nation in the hand, in the land upon the mountains of Israel. Mm -hmm. And one king shall be king to them all. That's Christ. And they shall be no more two nations. They shall be what? And they shall be no more two nations. They shall be no more two nations. You understand? Come on. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. So the Samaritan woman understood that. She understood the history, but she didn't understand that Christ now is coming to bring northern kingdom back into the fold. Now, because when Judah will, in these last days, in the third day, that's what Judah will do. Judah will go out and wake up the tribes. Not just southern kingdom, but also what? The scattered Israelites. That's what Judah will do. You understand? They're following after the footsteps of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because that's how he did it. You understand? The apostles followed the same footsteps. We are following the same footsteps this day. Watch this. Go back to 1 Samuel now. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Okay? 1 Samuel 2 verse 8. Watch this. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8. Read. He raised up the poor out of the dust. Now we understand what that means now. He raised up the poor out of the dust. Now we understand that. Let's deal with the dust. Give me Genesis 3, 17. He raised up the poor out of the dust. Okay. Genesis 3, verse 17. This is what was said to Adam after listening to his wife. Read that. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Come on. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, mm -hmm. and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. You see what the Lord, now the Lord is judging Adam and the seed of Adam, which is us today. You understand? Because he listened to his wife. Okay, next verse. Come on. You know what? Hmm. Before we get that, give me Genesis 5, 29. Because when Noah was born, something similar was said. He's going to comfort us because of what happened in Genesis 3. Watch this. Genesis 5, verse 29. Genesis chapter 5, verse 29. Mm -hmm. And he called his name Noah, saying, The same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands. Mm -hmm. Because of the ground, which was cursed, which the Lord hath cursed. You see what he's saying? He says, Noah, the same, the same Noah is going to comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands. What we read in Genesis 3, 17, because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed because of what Adam did. How would Noah comfort us because of what Adam did? Give me 1 Peter 2, verse 5. 1 Peter 2, verse 5. And we will be following after the same footsteps of our forefather Noah. Watch this. Second Peter, second Peter 2. Second Peter 2, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, mm. bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. You see that part right there? But saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. Our forefather Noah was a preacher of righteousness. That's how Noah would comfort. Because what did Noah do? Noah, Noah preached for 100 years before the flood came. Guess what we are doing this day? We are doing the same thing. Comforting our people that there's a better way out of this. 
politics is not the way. Uh, Christianity is not the way. Islam is not the way. So-called economics is thus not the way. The spirit of the Lord will gather us and we will keep the commandments and that's how we're going to rule the earth. That's the only way. You understand? That's how we must comfort our people and restore the decayed state of our nation. Now let's go back. Okay. Go back to Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3 verse 18 now. Genesis chapter 3 verse 18. Read. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art. No, wait, wait, dust. wait. What verse you at? Verse 18. Read verse 18 again. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 3 verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. Because we're going to now, we're going to toil. Remember what we say, what we read in Genesis 5. It says, this same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. That's why now when we plant these weeds coming out, that's an example of the ground that the Lord has cursed because of what happened in Genesis 3 with Adam and Eve. Go ahead. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. That's why now we have to work so hard to get to make, to get to end peanuts at the end of the month. You understand? Come on. Till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art. Mm -hmm. And unto dust shalt thou return. Now that's a heavy scripture right there. Because what would happen is that Adam will lost the kingdom. Okay. Adam lost the kingdom. And guess what? We also, during the time of David and Solomon, we lost it. Now we've been in captivity ever since. Watch this. Give me Lamentations 2 verse 1. You understand? He says, he raises up the poor out of the dust. That dust is, we will go, we will what? We will work hard for everything now. We're going to struggle to get whatever it is that we work hard for. You understand? And we're going to be doing that where? In captivity. Okay? Lamentations 2 verse 1. Read that. Lamentations chapter 2 verse 1. Read. How had the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger mm -hmm. and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel Read. and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. Because the Lord, he, he put us out of, out of our rulership and guess where we ended up? We ended up in slavery. Give me Sirach 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Watch this. Sirach chapter 10 and verse 8. Okay, because Sirach explained the same thing. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8. Read. Because of unrighteous dealings. Unrighteous dealings goes into sin. Because of sin. Okay, come on. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got, to, got by deceit. Mm -hmm. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. That's exactly what happened to us. You understand? That's exactly what happened to us. Now, we have to serve our enemies that hate and despise us. Lamentations 1 verse 3. Come on. Lamentations chapter 1 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction. Because of affliction. Judah went into slavery because of affliction. Come on. Remember, Jeremiah is lamenting here because we was in Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar. And when we were under Nebuchadnezzar, it wasn't just Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. It was all the rest of the 12 because when Babylon took over, he, he, he took over. When Babylon took over, he took over from the Assyrians. So under Nebuchadnezzar, all 12 was under him. Read that again. Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 3. Read. Judah is gone into captivity because of afflictions. Mm -hmm. And because of great servitude, because of what? And because of great servitude. Because of great servitude, meaning hard bondage. Like you read about in Isaiah 14. Come on. Verse 3. Read. She dwelleth among the heathen. She does what? 
she dwelleth among the heathen. We are among the other nations now, right? She findeth no rest. We don't find no rest, right? All her persecutors overtook her between the streets. Because guess what? Remember, the, if you read the history, the middle passage, they, it says what? Between the streets. Meaning what? They put us into hard bondage. So the recent one is during the transatlantic slave trade, the middle passage where more than 100 million of our people were, they died on in transit. You understand? To the Americas. Jump down to verse 5 now. Come on. Lamentations chapter 1 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Her adversaries are the chief. Mm, there we see. Her, in her adversaries are the chief. Our enemies now are ruling over us. That's why it says her adversaries are the chief. Read. Her enemies prosper. Are not our enemies prospering? Yes, they are prospering. Read. For the Lord hath afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Because of our sins. Read. Her children are gone into captivity before the mm -hmm. enemy. You see that thing? Her children are gone into captivity before the enemy. Next verse. Watch this. He's not just going into Judah. He's going to let you, he's going to explain itself what it means. Read the next verse. Watch this. You know what? Jump up to verse 4. Let's read that. Lamentations chapter 1 verse 4. Read. The ways of Zion do mourn. The what? The ways of Zion do mourn. So the subject matters about Zion. It's not just Judah. Zion, all 12. Read. Because none come to the solemn feasts. Mm -hmm. All her gates are desolate. Meaning the leadership. This is what Jeremiah is saying here in Lamentations 1 verse 4 is the same is the precept in Jeremiah 14 verse 2. It says the ways of Zion do mourn. Meaning Judah mourneth because none come into the solemn feast. All her gates are desolate. The gates thereof languish. Saying the same thing. Come on. Her priests sigh. Mm -hmm. They no courage to serve. They no courage to serve. Come on. Her virgins are afflicted. Mm -hmm. And she is in bitterness. We are in bitterness right now. You understand? We are in bitterness. So watch this. Give me Jeremiah 50 verse 33. Jeremiah 50 verse 33. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 33. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. They were what? We were oppressed together. You see that thing? Now, going into these last days, we are oppressed together, just like we were oppressed together under Babylon. You understand? Under Persia, under the Greeks, under the Romans. Today, under America. Same thing. We are oppressed together. The children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. So in Lamentations 1, the subject has not changed. You understand? Read that again, verse 33. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 33. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. Mm -hmm. They refused to let them go. They refused to let them go. Remember, we are under Babylon. You understand? Now we are under Babylon the Great. New Egypt. Guess what? What Pharaoh did? Pharaoh didn't want us to let us, he didn't want to let us go. Guess what? Even today, these nations that held us captive, they don't want to let us go. Hmm. History will repeat itself. Watch this. Go back to 1 Samuel 2, verse 8 again. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. Read. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust mm -hmm. and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill. Read. To set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. So now he says, he raiseth up the poor out of the dust. The dust is just what we just read. What is the dust? Captivity, hard bondage, slavery. You understand? Colonization, oppression, that's the dust. You understand? And lift it up the what? Read that part again. And, li and lift it up the beggar from the dunghill. Now let's deal with that. And he lifted up the beggar from the dunghill. Give me the book of Luke 16 verse 19. 
Who is the beggar that is being lifted up from the dung hill? A dung hill is a pile of poop. Right now, the state of the nation, we are in a pile of poop, a dung hill. We are not supposed to live like this. This is not living. You understand? We have now, you see, we are so destroyed as a people. That's why you see as a people, we glorify being in the lock sheen. We glorify that thing. But who does that? We glorify being acres. No, no, seekers. Hmm? When you move to the suburbs, but who knows? Ends on all. You know, like that's how destroyed we are as a people. You know what? Give me Jeremiah real quick. Okay, because Jeremiah addressed this thing. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 9 verse 1. I want to show you. Because this behavior of our people, when you move from the log, from the acres, you go to the suburbs, but you know who's ends in Ngolo. Let's hear what the Bible says. Jeremiah 9 verse 1. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 1. Read. Oh, that my, oh, that my head were waters, mm -hmm. and mine eyes a foundation of tears. No, a fountain, a fountain of tears. So Jeremiah is complaining, okay, because he says, I'm among treacherous men, wicked men, wicked Israelites, among his people, the same way we are among our people this day. Go ahead. Oh, that my head were waters, and mine eyes a fountain of tears, mm -hmm. that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Because he's seeing the destruction of the nation of Israel, like we are seeing today. Go ahead, verse 2, watch this. Verse 2. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men. You see what Jeremiah is saying? He's saying, oh, that I had in the wilderness. He says, I wish I can leave my people. I can just get the hell out of this place. He says, oh, that I had in the wilderness. I wish I had in the wilderness a lodging place, meaning a house. Of wayfaring men, meaning men that are progressive, men that don't want to normalize chaos and destruction and filth, which is what we have done as a people. Go ahead. That I might leave my people mm -hmm. and go from them. You see what he's saying, for, Ray? For they be all adulterers, mm -hmm. an assembly of treacherous men. You see that part right there? That's why in verse 4, that's what we were going over about doing business in Israel. Verse 4 goes into, it says, take it every one of his neighbor. Because he was among his people. And his people were wicked as hell. That's the same thing today. Nothing is done, changed. You understand? Now, I just wanted to explain that. Because we, we seem to think that, no, this is living. No, this is not living. We have fallen so far from ones, from where we come from. We are the top, top nation on earth. The cream of the crop. Creme de la creme. But look at us today. Be sagging pants, eating the corpo. Unbelievable. Okay. First Samuel 2. Verse 8 again. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 8. Right. He raised up the poor out of the dust. Mm -hmm. And lifted up the beggar from the dunghill. You see that thing? And lifted up. And lifted up the beggar from the dunghill. Lifting up the beggar is the same thing as raising up the poor out of the dust. He's just repeating it here. Watch this. Let's deal with the beggar part. Luke 16 verse 19. Luke chapter 16 verse 19. Watch this. Let's deal with the beggar. Okay. Luke chapter 16 verse 19. Right. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen mm -hmm. and fed sumptuously every day. So this rich man, give me that in First Maccabees 1 real quick. First Maccabees 1. Okay, First Maccabees chapter 1 and verse 11. Okay. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 11. Mm -hmm. In those days when they out of Israel, wicked men, who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. Come on. For well, since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Meaning what? Let's make a league with these nations so we can also be part of their riches and their glory. So this, this represents the rich man, the coons. This is the coon club right here. You understand? Give me Psalms. Hmm. I love this. My favorite chapter. One of my favorite chapters in Psalms. Give me Psalm 73. Hmm. Beautiful book right here. Okay. Psalm 73. 
started verse 3. Psalm 73 verse 3. You know what started verse 2? King David is, is complaining in the spirit right here. Okay. Psalm 73 verse 2. Go ahead. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. Mm -hmm. My steps had well nigh slipped. So he's saying, listen, I almost, you know, I almost lost it. You understand? My steps had well nigh slipped. I almost slipped into the world. Watch this. Come on. No, this is not David. This is Asaph. Come on. For I was envious at the foolish. You see what he's saying? He was envious at the foolish. Who is the foolish? Those that do not keep God's commandments. First Samuel 13, 13. Let's get that real quick. First Samuel 13, verse 13. Read what you got. First Samuel chapter 13, verse 13. Come on. And Samuel said to Saul, mm -hmm. Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandments of the Lord thy God. Read. Which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. So now the foolish is those that do not keep God's commandments. Go back to Psalm 73 verse 3. So David is saying he was envious at the sinners. Those that don't want to keep the laws of God. He was envious at them. Okay. I believe there's a scripture in, in Sirach, right? There's a scripture in Sirach. Let me look at it. Sirach 9. It goes into this. Sirach Ecclesiasticus chapter 9. Verse 11, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. Go ahead. Envy not the glory of a sinner. You see what the Lord is saying? So David is saying he was envious at the foolish. You understand? When I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So what did the Lord say? Read that again. Verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Envy not the glory of a sinner. Meaning the riches, the riches, the glory of the sinner. Go ahead. For thou knowest not what his end, what shall be his end. You don't know what shall be his end. Next verse, come on. Delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in. Because the ungodly have pleasure in unrighteousness. Give me that in first, uh, Second Thessalonians 2. We coming back here. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay, it says don't envy... He said, he said, don't delight in the things that the ungodly have, have, have pleasure in. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, okay, verse 12. Watch this. Second Start Thessalonians. 11. We're going to read 11 and 12. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. Uh -huh. Meaning what? They believe the lie, they, the lies they tell themselves. Go ahead. That they all might be damned mm -hmm. who believe not the truth. Come on. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see that thing? They have pleasure in unrighteousness. So the Lord says, don't delight in the thing the ungodly have pleasure in. Because they have pleasure in unrighteousness, in sin. First, uh, first John 5. Let's get that. First John 5 verse 17. Okay. First John chapter 5 verse 17. Read that. First John chapter 5 verse 17. Go ahead. All unrighteousness is sin. Mm -hmm. And there is a sin not unto death. So it says all unrighteousness is sin. So they have pleasure in sin. You see that thing? Go back to Sirach 9 verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 12. Go ahead. Delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in. Mm -hmm. But remember, they shall not go unpunished unto their grave. You see what the Lord is saying? He says they are going to be punished unto their grave. Don't, don't, don't worry about them. They are going to be punished because they delight in, they have pleasure in sin. Watch this. Sirach 20 verse 9. Ecclesiasticus chapter 20 verse 9. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 20 verse 9. Mm -hmm. He that useth, verse 9. There is a sinner that had good success in evil things. Do you see that part right there? They have good success in evil things. So the Lord is saying, don't glory. Don't, he says, don't envy the glory of a sinner because they have good success in evil things. They have pleasure in unrighteousness and they have good success in things, doing evil things. Selling drugs, you understand? Selling our sisters, selling our, our kids, you understand? To make money. 
all of that. They have, they have good success in evil things, destroying their own people. Go ahead. And there is a gain that turneth to loss. Because they, how, they, those, if those things that they got through evil, they're going to lose them just as fast. Some of them, they have bullets go through their head. They get put to death. Verse 12, come on. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. There is, they is that buyeth much for little. Read. And repayeth it sevenfold. Because they are always trying to scam somebody. There is that buyeth much. They're getting much for little, but they end up what paying it sevenfold because they, because they what is unjust balances. They are falsifying balances by deceit. You understand that they get punishment from the most high. Psalm 73 verse 3 again. Psalm 73 verse 3. Mm -hmm. For I was envious at the foolish mm -hmm. when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Because the wicked is prospering. Even the wicked of our people, they are prospering. Jump down to verse 5. Watch this. Verse 5. They are not in trouble as other men. Mm -hmm. Neither are they plagued like other men. They are not in trouble as us. Because the other man is making reference to us. You understand? Neither are they plagued like other men. They don't go through the plagues that we go through. They don't go through the troubles, the stresses that we go through. Okay, come on. Therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain. Mm -hmm. Violence covered them as a garment. You see that thing? It says pride because what? They departed from their maker. Like we read about in Sarah 10 verse 12. Go ahead. Verse 7. Their eyes stand out with fatness. Because they are rich. They are rich. They've got money. Give up Petrus Mutsipe. Those type of peoples. Our, the celebrities, the, the music, the, the artists in the music industry and so forth. Actors, football players, whatever, whatever. Go ahead. They have more than their than hearts could wish. They have everything. They have more than heart could wish. Whatever they wish for, they get it. They prosper in the world. Go ahead. They are corrupt mm -hmm. and speak wickedly concerning oppression. You see that part right they there? They are corrupt. These are men and women of corrupt minds. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. That's why a lot of them, they say, I'm not oppressed. I've got everything I need. I've got my house. I've got my car. Very, very short-sighted and small-minded. They don't look at the big picture. As a nation, we're at the bottom. Okay? Read that again. Psalms 73, verse 8. Come on. They are corrupt mm -hmm. and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They speak loftily. You see, without any care in the world, they have no sense of agency. They don't see that as a people, we are in trouble. Go ahead. They set their mouth against the heavens. Mm -hmm. And their tongue walketh through the earth. So this, remember, we're going over this thing to explain the rich man in Luke 16, verse 19. Okay, these are the, these are the, the, the rich and the wealthy of our people. This is how they think, this is how they, this is how they look at the world. And the society teaches them to separate themselves from us. You understand? Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. And they say, how doth God know? Mm. And is there knowledge in the Most High? Is there knowledge in the Most High? You see what there's, how does God, what does the Lord know? You understand? So they are mocking the Most High God now. That's, give me that in Deuteronomy 8 verse 17. This is what they say. We read this a uh, couple of some things ago. Not today though. Okay, Deuteronomy 8, verse 17. This is what they say. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. You see that thing? This is what they say. They speak loftily. You understand? What does God know? Next verse. Come on. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Mm hmm. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Come on. That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. You see, that's how they think. That's their mindset. Now go back to Psalm 73, now verse 12. Watch this. 
This is the key to the whole thing. Okay. Psalm chapter 73, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. Mm -hmm. They increase in riches. You see that part right there? These are the rich men. Behold, these are the ungodly. So now the Lord is coming back and said, don't worry. These are the ungodly who prosper in the world. The world is coming to an end. They are the ungodly. They prosper in this world. They increase in riches. You understand? Jump down to verse 16. Verse 16. When I thought to know this, mm -hmm. it was too painful for me. You see what he's saying? When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. You understand? It was too painful because they are the ungodly and yet they are prospering in the world. They increase in riches. You understand? Because he says in verse 3, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Read the next verse now. This is the comfort. Okay? Verse 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, mm -hmm. then understood I their end. You see that thing? Until I went into the sanctuary of God. The sanctuary of God is the Bible. Until he went to the, into the Bible, then he understood their end. How they are going to be destroyed. You understand? Sirach chapter 9, verse 12. Watch this. We read it earlier so we can understand. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 12. Read. Delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in. Mm -hmm. But remember... These shall not go unpunished unto their grave. Remember what he said. He says, these are the ungodly which prosper in the world. The ungodly. The ungodly. He says, delight not in the thing the ungodly have pleasure in. We know they have pleasure in unrighteousness, which is sin. The Lord is saying, listen, what? They are not going to go unpunished. The Lord said, they're not going to go unpunished. Now go back to Luke now, 16. Okay, 16 verse 19 again. Luke chapter 16 verse 19. Come on. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. That's what we went over. That's the rich man. Our people that have joined themselves to the heathen because they like the glory of the Grecians best of all. Go ahead. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, mm -hmm. which was laid at his gate full of souls. So now this beggar, Lazarus, he represents us. You understand? The beggar Lazarus represents us. We are the beggars. You understand? But the bourgeoisie Negroes, they don't think they are beggars. They don't think that. But they still have to go to the shops and buy toilet paper to wipe their behind. But they don't think they are beggars. You understand? Read that again. Luke chapter 16 verse 20. Mm -hmm. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of souls. Mm -hmm. Read. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his souls. The moreover, the dogs came and licked his souls. That's talk about the nations. Now, but watch this. Is it 20 and 21? That we are the beggar. We are Lazarus. Watch this. Give me Sirach 40 verse 28. Ecclesiastes chapter 40 verse 28. Watch this. This is what the Lord commanded us. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 40 verse 28. Mm -hmm. My son, lead not a beggar's life. Mm. For better it is to die than to beg. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, my son, don't lead, don't lead a beggar's life. For better it is to die than to beg. Because we are the beggars. Like we read, we read in Luke 16 verse 20. Go ahead. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 40 verse 29. Mm -hmm. The life of him that dependeth on another man's table is not to be counted for a life. Like I was saying, this is not living. We are depending on another man's table. And you see what? He says, there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. The rich man is our people because our people are crying to the politicians. 
They are crying to the businessmen, the CEOs. They, you understand? All these rich men, they, they reach over our people. They are crying to them. So they are desert. that's why when they come to the community, to the locations, they are able to manipulate our people. They are able to play on their emotions because they know our people, we are struggling, we are suffering. They come in, they want votes, you understand? They want whatever. They, just so they can gain advantage from their people. They still want to squeeze the little bit of whatever is left from the pockets of our people that don't even have that money. That's what they do. And they give our people false hope. Read that part again, verse 29. Ecclesiastes chapter 40, verse 29. Read. Right. The life of him that dependeth on another man's table is not to be counted for life. Uh -huh. For he polluteth himself with other men's meat. Read. Right. But a wise man, well nurtured, will be a, will beware thereof. So now, because now the Lord is nurturing, is nurturing us out of the scriptures, now we become aware of what society is doing and our people that have joined themselves to the heathens, what they are doing to their own people as well. You understand? Come on. Verse 30. Verse 30. Mm -hmm. Begging is sweet in the mouth of the shameless. You see that thing? Begging is sweet in the mouth of the shameless. Because right now as a people, we are beggars. We are begging. You understand? That's why the Lord says, I'm going to wake you up, my children, so that you are not beggars no more, so that you are not shameless no more. Go ahead. But in his belly, they shall burn a fire. You see, what is that fire? Shame. Feeling small. The nations are squashing like, like bugs. You understand? That's why the Lord said this thing. I think it's in Isaiah 14. Isaiah 41, real quick. I believe it, that's, that's what I want. Isaiah 41, verse 14. That's why Isaiah says, he says something here. Hmm. Isaiah 41 verse 14. Yes, read that. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Yo, hold on. Start at verse 18. I like verse 18. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13. Go ahead. For I, the Lord thy God, mm. will hold thy right hand. Come on. Saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, and if fear not, I will help thee. The Lord is making us a promise. He says, don't fear, I'm going to help you, Jacob. Come on, verse 14. Fear not, the worm Jacob. You see what he's calling us? The worm. He says, fear not, the worm Jacob. We are a worm right now. We are shameless. We are beggars. Okay, we are polluted by other men's meat. We are defiled in this land. They give us defiled food, education, vaccines, and all of that to destroy us. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, fear not, thou worm, Jacob. Okay, come on, read. And ye men of Israel. You men of Israel, come on. I will help thee, said the Lord. What did the Lord say? Whoa, whoa, whoa. The Lord says what? I will help thee, said the Lord. I'm going to help you, said the Lord. Read. And thy redeemer. Uh -huh. The Holy One of Israel. Next verse. What's the next verse? Verse 15 now. Go ahead. Beautiful stuff right here. Come on. Behold, I will make thee a sharp threshing instrument. Have Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. You are skipping some stuff here. Don't mess me up now. Read verse 15 again. Come on. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 15. Go ahead. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. You see what the Lord says he's going to do? He's going to turn us into a weapon of war. That's what he's doing right now. He's turning us into a weapon of war. He says, thou would be he says what? Fear not, thou worm Jacob. Okay. Then verse 15 says, behold, I will make thee a new sharp, sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Okay. Read. Come on. Thou shalt thresh the mountains. Meaning great kingdoms, governments. Go ahead. And beat them small. We're going to beat this nation small. Okay, come on. We're going to put fear of God in them. Read. And shall make the hills as chaff. As chaff. Next verse. Come on. Thou shalt fan them. Mm, we're going to fan the, the wind, nation. And the wind shall carry them away. Into captivity. They're going to go into captivity. Read on. And the whirlwind shall scatter them. Mm-hmm. 
and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord uh -huh. and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. That's exactly what's going to happen. We are no longer going to be shameless, no more. The Lord says, don't worry, I'm going to help you. Just keep my commandments. I'm going to put my glory upon you. I've chosen you from the beginning. Worry not, fear not. I got you, Jacob. Don't worry about this thing. Give me to 28, verse 48. I'm still showing you how we are beggars this day. Okay, we be begging for everything. 28, verse 48. Watch this. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Mm -hmm. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Read. In hunger and in so thirst. It does, it, listen, it doesn't get lower than that. The Lord says we're going to serve our enemies in hunger. We're begging for food. Understand that. Okay, come on. In hunger and in thirst. And, and in, in thirst. Hold on. In thirst. We're begging for basic things. Natural resources. We're begging for those things. In thirst. The, the white man didn't make water. It's coming from the sky. But guess what? Now we're begging for something to drink. Could you imagine that? Give me that in Psalms 147. I was just going over this this day. Read that. Psalms 147. I mean, he, listen, this is how low it has gotten. Because you need to understand this thing. Psalms 148. Well, I mean 147. Okay, verse 8. Watch this. Psalms chapter 147, verse 8. Read. Who covereth the heaven with clouds. Mm -hmm. Who prepareth rain for the earth. Read. Who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. You see that thing? The, who, who's doing that? Jump up to verse 3. Let's see who's doing all of this. Psalm chapter 147 verse 3. Mm -hmm. He healeth the broken in heart. And no, bindeth no, no. up. Verse 2, verse 2. Read verse 2 for me. Psalm chapter 147 verse 2. Read. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is doing this thing. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. Come on. He gathered together the outcasts of Israel. Scattered Israelites. Jump down to verse 8 now. Watch this. Psalm chapter 147 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Who covered the heaven with clouds. Who prepared the rain for the earth. Come on. Who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. You see what the, the Lord is the one that brings forth rain. Now we are begging for the nations. We, be, we beg them in thirst. Hmm? That's what we're doing. We're begging the nations in thirst. Hmm. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Give me the three HT, the three holy children. Let's go there. The three holy children. Okay, give me that. Let's go there. The three holy children. The three holy children. We're going to start at verse... Um, we're going to start at verse 30, 39. The three holy children. Let's read that. The song of the three holy children. Uh -huh. Verse 39. Go ahead. O all ye powers of the Lord, mm -hmm. bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. We must, bless, we, must, we must praise and exalt him above all forever. Jump down now. Jump down to verse, verse 42. Watch this. Verse 42. Mm -hmm. Oh, every shower and dew. Mm -hmm. Let's see the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Now that's the key right there. You see that part right there? It says, oh, every shower and dew. There are showers coming from the heavens. And he says, bless you the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Because the rain that's coming up, who's bringing that? The Lord. The do coming up, who's bringing it? The Lord is doing that thing. To water everything on the ground. The Lord is doing that thing. Jump down to verse 54. Come on. Verse 54. Mm -hmm. Oh, all you know what? things. Read, read, read verse 51. Read verse 51. Then we're going to read verse 54. Come on. Verse 51. Mm -hmm. Oh, ye lightnings and clouds. Bless ye the Lord. Praise Come and on. exalt his name. Praise and exalt him above all forever. You see what he all, all ye lightnings and clouds. Because guess what? When the Lord gives us rain, 
okay, he's the one that prepares the cloud for rain and it showers, you understand? It covers the whole earth, you understand? The lightnings, the clouds, the Lord is doing that thing for our benefit, for the benefit of Israel. Verse 54, come on. Verse 54. Mm -hmm. For all ye things that grow on the earth, right. bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. Go ahead. O ye fountains, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt his name, his praise and exalt him above all forever. O ye fountains, the fountains of what? Water. Where do they come from? The sky. The Lord is the one that brings down, brings us down here on earth. When he created the oceans, the seas, he made all of that for Israel. Okay, come on. But now guess what? We beg him for that. We beg him for our own things. You beg him for your own property. That will make no sense. Go ahead. O ye seas and rivers, mm -hmm. bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. You see, the Lord, listen, all of these things is for our benefit. Now jump down to verse 60 now. We're going to read down. I'm going to show you what the Lord calls us in different contexts. Read what you got. Verse 60. Uh -huh. O ye children of men. Read. Bless ye the Lord. Praise mm -hmm. and exalt him above all forever. Verse 61. O Israel, bless ye the Lord. Stop Praise. right there. Hold on. Read verse 61 again. The three holy children. Verse 61. Uh-huh. O Israel, bless ye the Lord. Stop right there. Jump down to verse 62. Verse 62. Uh-huh. O ye priests of the Lord. Jump down bless to verse 63. The Lord. Hold on. Verse 63, verse 62 again. Stay with me. Verse 62. Uh -huh. O ye priests of the Lord. Uh -huh. Bless ye the Lord. Verse 63 now. O ye servants of the Lord. Mm. Bless ye the Lord. Verse 64 now. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous. Bless ye the Lord. Verse 65. Watch this. O ye holy and humble men of heart. Mm. Bless ye the Lord. Read. Praise and exalt him above all forever. You see what he's calling us? Children of men, or Israel, or ye priests, or servants, or ye spirits and souls of the righteous, or ye holy and humble men of heart. Bless ye the Lord. So all of these things that the Lord has made that we just read about, the Most High God made them for our benefit. And we are commanded to praise the Lord for this day. You understand? Because the Lord is going to feed us again. He says, don't worry, Jacob, you worm. I'm going to take care of you. You understand? I'm going to change you in the twinkling of an eye. Okay? Now we just be begging for everything. Water. Are you kidding me? Second Ezra 16, verse 60. We be begging for water. Hmm. In Brazil, they are paying rain tax. You can't make this stuff up. Rain tax. The white men don't make no rain. The Lord does it. You see, this is the level of the pride of this man. Read that. 2 Ezra 16, verse 16. 2 Ezra chapter 16, verse 16. Go ahead. In the desert hath he made springs of water mm. and pools upon the tops of the mountains. Come on. That the floods might pour down from the high rocks to water the earth. You see that thing right there? Because where is it coming from? The earth, the clouds. The Lord made that. The Lord made that thing. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Okay. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Go ahead. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, mm. which the Lord, which the Lord shall send against thee. Come on. In hunger and in thirst. And in nakedness. And in what? And in nakedness. And in nakedness. For clothes. For clothes on our back. These are basic things in life. We are begging for these things. That's why it says we are beggars. You understand? He lifted up the beggar from the dunghill. Because the condition that we're in, we are in the dunghill. You understand? The Lord is lifting, he is lifting us up because we beggars. We are begging right now for food, for water, for clothing, shelter, education. Everything, we be begging for it. And our enemies, they love that thing. That the greatest nation on earth that are destined to rule everybody on earth, they are begging now. They love that. 
So don't just get angry. Do something about it. That's why we're here. That's why the Lord is waking us up this day. Okay? Read again verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, mm -hmm. in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. You see what the Lord is saying? So now, in want of all things, we're going to be begging for want of all things. We're going to be begging for want of all things. You know what? Hmm. Hold that. Give me, give me Leviticus 26 verse 4. Really, I couldn't let this go. Okay? Leviticus 26 verse 4. I want to go back to that rain part. Because the what's going on in Brazil, that's some evil stuff. That is some evil stuff. Okay? Leviticus 26 verse 4. Watch this. Start of verse 3. Hmm. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 3. Go ahead. If you walk in my statutes mm -hmm. and keep my and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season. You see what the Lord is saying? If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, the Lord says he will do what? Then I will give you rain in due season. He says, I'm going to give you rain in due season. The Lord is the one that gives rain, not the white man, but he's putting tax on rainwater. It's illegal now to collect rainwater. You understand? Come on. And the land shall yield her increase. Mm. And the trees of the field shall yield her fruit. You see that thing? The Lord is going to take care of us. The ground is going to be fertile. Okay, come on. And your threshing and the trees of the field shall yield her fruit. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage. Your threshing, that's our threshing floor. When we, when we harvest, they're going to reach unto the vintage, meaning to the next harvest. Go ahead. And the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. You see that part right there? Come on. The vintage will reach unto the sowing time. So the seeds that we were collected during the harvest, they're going to reach. They're not going to rot. They're not going to have worms in them. You're like, they're heavy, they're like it's going on now. Go ahead. And ye shall eat your bread to the fruit, to the mm -hmm. full. Read. And dwell in your land safely. We're going to tell, that's when we are in the kingdom. Watch this. Because I knew I was missing something. You told me 11. Because that's where we was at. You told me chapter 11 verse 14. That's what I was looking for. I was in that chapter, but I, did, I was just looking right at it. You told me chapter 11 verse 14. Let's read that. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 14. Go ahead. That I will give you... You know what? The, hmm. Start verse 11. Read verse 11. We're going to read down. You know what? Me, hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Read verse 9. Then we're going to jump. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 9. Come on. And that ye may prolong your days in the land. The land. The, Lord, the, land the land of Israel. That's the land he's talking about. Come on. Which the Lord swear unto your fathers... To give unto them and to their seed. Mm -hmm. A land that floweth with milk and honey. A land that floweth with milk and honey. Go ahead. Come on. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. For the land, whether thou goest to possess it, is not as the land of Egypt, from whence he came out, where thou sowest thy seed and waterest it with thy foot as a garden of herbs. Because that's what we was doing in Egypt. Come on. As a garden of herbs. Mm -hmm. But the land, whether you go to possess it, it is a land of hills and valleys. Mm. And, dr and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. You see that thing? And drinketh water of the rain of heaven. Because that's where rain comes from. From the heavens. You understand? The rain comes from the heavens. Read. Verse 12, That's 12, a land mm -hmm. which the Lord thy God careth for. Mm. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it. Mm. From the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. That's some heavy stuff right there. Throughout the year, the Lord says, my eyes are upon the land of Jerusalem. To take care of it, to water it, to make sure everything is good for my children right there. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass. 
Mm. If ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, really? to love you, to love the Lord your God, and to serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul, mm -hmm. that I will give, that I will give you the rain of your land in His due season. Really? the first rain and the latter rain, mm. that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. Ray, come on. And I will send grass in thy field for, the, for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Now, who does, who's not looking forward to this? Who's not looking, listen, who's not looking forward to this day? I mean, really look at the contrast. The Lord says he's going to do this if we keep his commandments. He will love him with, his, with all our heart and with all our soul. He's going to do all these great things for us. Beautiful stuff that will endure forever. Hmm? It, they will endure forever. Guess what? Now we are beggars. We're begging for water. Could you imagine that? A natural resource, we're begging for that stuff. Even for clothes. I mean, for, for clothes, yes. Because the white man, the, 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 the material they are using for these clothes and all that, they're getting it from the earth. Okay? They are getting it from the earth. Even if they are saying, no, these are synthetic materials, what are they using to create those synthetic materials? Because they are using the, the periodic table of elements. The periodic table of elements are found in the earth. So either way, it's coming from the ground. You understand? Watch this. Okay, I wanted to explain that. Give me Nehemiah 936. We're still dealing with the beggar because we be begging. Okay, Nehemiah 9, verse 36. Let's read that. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 36. Go ahead. Behold, we are servants this day. Mm. And for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof, Behold, we are servants in it. That's the same thing. This land to eat the fruits thereof, that's the land we're reading about that the Lord says he's going to take care of. Now because we broke the commandments, you understand? Now we are servants this day. For the land and for the fruits of the land that the Lord gave unto our fathers. Now we are servants in the same land. You understand? Read. Verse 37. Mm-hmm. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. You see what he's saying? That's why they don't leave because they will never finish the minerals on, on the continent of Africa. Because it says it yielded much increase, much increase unto the kings whom the Lord has set over us because of our sins. They're not going to finish the riches on this continent. They will never finish them. You understand? Come on. Also, they have, they have dominion over our bodies. Stop right there. And over. They have dominion over our bodies. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 28. We're going to serve them in hunger, in thirst, and in nakedness. They have dominion over our bodies. Because you thirst. Your body needs what? It needs water. Your body needs clothes. Your body needs, um, your body needs food. They have dominion over our bodies. They are the ones that dictate what we eat. You understand? They're the ones that dictate that. Yes, we've got fruits and veggies and all of that, but we don't plant these things. They do. We don't control these things. They do. They genetically modify them. You understand? So they have dominion over our bodies. They even decide where you get buried. Okay? Come on. Also, they have dominion over our bodies mm -hmm. and over our cattle. Read. At their pleasure. And we are in great distress. We're in great distress. Look at the way our people are behaving. We're in great distress. Look at the looting that happened. Great distress. Let's go back to 1 Samuel now. Chapter 2, verse 8, once again. Okay. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. Read. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. Mm -hmm. Lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill. We the beggar. So the Lord is lifting us up out of the dying hill. So Lazarus represents us, the beggar, because we be begging. Okay, come on. To set them among princes. To set them among princes. To set them among, we are the prince. 
We are the princes of God. Give me that in Genesis 32, 27. To set them among princes. Okay. Genesis chapter 2, verse 27. Great. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Come on. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Mm -hmm. For as a prince has as the a power with God. For as a prince... For come as on, a prince on. has the power with God and as with a men. prince, as a prince, we have power with the Lord. And we have power with God. The, the only the, the, we are the only nation that have power with God on this earth. We are the only nation. You understand? We are a prince that has power with God. Go ahead and what? Has the power with God and with men. Mm -hmm. And has prevailed. We prevail over all the men on this earth because the Lord has chosen us to rule over them all. Sirach 17 verse 17. Watch this. For as a prince has thou power with God, okay, and men, and has prevailed. Sirach 17, 17. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 17 verse 17. Come on. For the division of the nations of the whole earth he set a ruler over every people. Mm -hmm. But Israel is the Lord's portion. You see what he's saying? He says, for the whole, the, all the nations of the earth, he says, he set a ruler over every people. So who's, who was set as a ruler over all the nations of the earth? Jacob, Israel, the Lord's portion. We are set up as the ruler of all the nations on earth. That's what that verse is saying right there. Okay, we are the prince. He says, to set them among princes. Princes now. You understand? Because you're going to be among righteous Israelites in the kingdom on one accord with the Lord. Okay? Go back to where he was at. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. Read. He raised up the poor out of the dust mm -hmm. and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill. Read. To set them among princes. To set them among what? To set them among princes. Among princes, come on, because we are the prince of the power. Read. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. He is going to make us to inherit the throne of glory, meaning the kingdom of heaven on earth. Okay? Give me Romans 9 verse 3. Watch this. Romans 9. This is the atomic bomb to Christianity right here. Romans 9, verse 3. Read what you got. Okay. Come on, come on. Romans chapter 9, verse 3. Read. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ from my brethren, mm -hmm. my kinsmen according to the flesh. My brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. So Paul is, is, is talking about his brethren, his kinsmen according to bloodline. Go ahead. Verse 4, who are Israelites? The Israelites are his brethren and his kinsmen according to the flesh. Come on. To whom pertaineth the adoption uh -huh. and the glory and the, the covenants and the glory. The glory of the kingdom pertains to the Israelites. Okay, come on. And the what? And the glory and the covenants. The old and new covenants belongs to us. Come on. And the giving of the law. The laws of God was given only to us. Read. And the service of God. Mm -hmm. And the promises. So we are the servants of God. And this, the promises that are written in this book only pertains to us. Next verse. Watch this. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Whose are the fathers? Uh -huh. And of whom, as concerning the flesh... Christ as concerning came. the as concerning the what and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ concerning came. the flesh the flesh the flesh bloodline okay as and as whom and of whom concerning the flesh meaning the fathers concerning the flesh the bloodline the Israelites in verse 4 Christ came Christ only came for the Israelites read on who is over all 
God, God blessed forever. Amen. God bless forever. Amen. Go back to First Samuel 2, verse 8 again. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. Mm -hmm. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. Right. And lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill. Come on. To set them among princes. Mm -hmm. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. Read. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. Stop right there. That's the part we wanted to get to. For the what? For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. Watch this. Give me Exodus 24 verse 4. For the pillars of... Who are the pillars of the earth? Let's see what a pillar is. Watch this. Read that thing. Exodus 24 verse 4. Come on, come on, come on. Exodus chapter 24 verse 4. Read. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And rose up early in the morning. And builded an altar under the hill. Come on. And 12 pillars. And what? And 12 pillars. And 12 pillars. Go ahead. According to the 12 tribes of Israel. You see, we, we see what these pillars are. The pillars of the Lord. The pillars of the earth are the Lord's. Guess what? These are the pillars of the earth right here. The 12 tribes of Israel. We are the pillars of the earth. Mm. Read again. Verse 4. Exodus chapter 24 verse 4. Go ahead. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and builded an altar under the hill mm -hmm. and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Now watch this thing right here. Matthew 19 verse 28. Okay. You know, before you get that, hmm. you know what? Let's read that. Matthew 19, 28. I'm jumping ahead. I'm going to read it again. Matthew 19, 28. Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, Come on. Verily I say unto you, Read. That ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, mm. ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, Upon what? Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones. He's talking, he's talking to the disciples now. The, the twelve. He says, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones. Twelve pillars. They are the pillars. Go ahead. Judging the twelve tribes of Israel. You see that thing? The twelve thrones, the twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Watch this. Give me Galatians 2 verse 9. Galatians 2 verse 9 now. Hmm. Galatians 2 verse 9. Come on. Galatians 2 verse 9. Read. And when James, Cephas, and John, Cephas who seemed to Peter. be pillars. Cephas, that's Peter. Cephas, that's Peter. Read that again, verse 9. Galatians chapter 2 verse 9. Mm -hmm. And when James, Cephas, and John, mm -hmm. who seemed to be pillars. Leaders, leaders. Who seem to be pillars, leaders. Go ahead. Perceived the grace that was given unto me. They gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship. Mm -hmm. That we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Yeah, they should go unto the heathen. Give me Ezekiel 20 verse 32. So we can understand who the heathens are. Okay. The apostle Paul went to the heathen. Him and Barnabas. Ezekiel 20 verse 32. Okay. Let's understand who those heathens are. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 32. Come on. And that which cometh into your, into your mind shall not mm -hmm. be at all. Read. And ye say, we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries, to serve wood and stone. You see that thing? There, this is what our people were saying. Do you understand? During the time of Ezekiel, they said, we will be as the heathen. Okay? We will be as the heathen. That's what they were saying. Watch this. Give me 2nd Ezra 2 verse 33. Okay? 2nd Ezra 2 verse 33. I'm showing you that word heathen there. The heathen just means nations. Okay? Outside of the 12 tribes of Israel. Those are heathens. Okay? 2nd Ezra 2 verse 33. Watch this. 
Second Ezra chapter 2 verse 33. I, Esdras, received a charge of the Lord upon the Mount Oreb mm -hmm. that I should go unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they set me at naught mm -hmm. and despised the commandment of the Lord. So now Ezra was sent to the to our people to teach them, and they set them, they set him at naught. They didn't want to listen. They despised the commandment that he was teaching unto them. Same as today. Next verse. Watch this. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen. O ye what? O ye heathen. You see what he's calling Israel? He is calling the Israelites heathens. He says, and therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen. Go ahead. O ye heathen, that hear and understand. Mm -hmm. Look for your shepherd. Read. He shall give you everlasting rest. Come on. For he is nigh at hand. That shall come in the end of the world. You see that thing right there? That's the second coming of Christ. Now let's go back. Okay. Now give me Revelation 3 verse 12 now. Revelation 3 verse 12. Okay. So James, Cephas, and John, these were pillars. You understand? That's what we read Matthew 19 verse 28. Those are the pillars. Okay. Revelation chapter 3 verse 12. Come on. Him that overcometh. Mm. Will I make a pillar in the temple of my God? You see what Christ is saying? If you overcome your sins, your mental hang-ups, he says he will make you a pillar, a leader in the temple of my God, of his God. Go ahead. And he shall go no more out. Meaning no more captivity. You're not going to go out into captivity no more. Read. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God. You're going to get a new name of the Mosai on that day, the real name. Go ahead. And I will write upon him the name of my God and mm -hmm. the name of the city of my God. Come on. Which is New Jerusalem. Read. Which cometh down out of heaven from my God. Mm -hmm. And I will write upon him my new name. That's some heavy stuff right there. Give me Matthew 24 verse 13. Because Christ said the same thing again here. He's just using different words. Watch this. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. Come on. But he that shall endure unto the end, mm -hmm. the same shall be saved. They, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Meaning you overcome, you overcome your sins. You endure and you overcome unto the end. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of, um, give me Revelation 2. Okay, Revelation 2, 26 now. Revelation 2, verse 26. Let's read that. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Come on. And he that overcometh mm -hmm. and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. He's saying the same thing. To him that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Meaning what? I'm going to make you a pillar. A pillar is a leader. A leader, a leader in that day, guess what those leaders are going to have? We're going to have power. We are the pillars. You understand? Watch this. Give me 2nd Ezra 2.38. Hmm. Before you get that, give me Revelation 7 verse 4. Revelation 7 verse 4. These are the pillars right here. Okay, come on. Revelation chapter 7 verse 4. Read. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. Mm-hmm. And they were sealed and hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So what we're reading here, guess what this is? Go back to Exodus 24 verse 4. You understand? He's saying the same thing that Moses is saying. Okay. These pillars are the leaders. The 144,000, 12,000 men from each tribe. Okay. Read that. Exodus 24 verse 4. Exodus 24 verse 4. Read. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and mm -hmm. builded an altar under the hill. Come on. And 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. You see that that's the same thing we read in Revelation. Second Ezra 238 now. Second Ezra 2, verse 38. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 38. Read. Arise up and stand. Behold. The number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. 
That number is the 144,000 that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. Go ahead. Verse 39. Which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of the Lord. They've received meaning what? Immortal, immortal, immortality. The glorious garments is immortality, meaning what? No longer these, these weak flesh that we got, but immortal, immortal bodies. Go ahead. Take thy number, O Zion. The number, and... the number is 144,000. That's the number. Take thy number, O Zion. Go ahead. And shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, mm -hmm. which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. Which have done what? Which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. They kept the commandments. They endure unto the end. You understand? They overcame their own sins. Read on. The number of thy children, whom thou longest for, is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Beseech the power of the Lord, mm -hmm. that thy people, which have been called from, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. You need to understand the hundred and forty-four thousand. They are already, the Lord already knows who they are. Even those that are not in the truth yet, they are, but they are part of the 144. There's nothing that's going to, they are still going to come into this truth. You understand? Because he says, which have been called from the beginning, Genesis. Even before, in the spirit world, there was called. Before I knew you, we, give me that in Jeremiah 1. Hmm. Let me not butcher it. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Let's read that. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Go ahead. Before I formed thee in the belly, mm -hmm. I knew thee. Read. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Come on. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You see that thing? Before, before mother and father came together, the all already knew in the spirit world that this is going to be a prophet right here. And I'm going to send him on earth to fulfill all my will. Like we read about in Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13. Okay. Now, let's go back. First Samuel 2, First Samuel, chapter 2, verse 8. First Samuel, chapter 2, verse 8. Read. He raised up the poor out of the dust mm -hmm. and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill. Come on. To set them among the princes mm. and to make them inherit the throne of glory. The kingdom. Come on. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. The pillars of the earth, the pillars of the earth are the Lord's because these are the 144,000, the leaders of the leading body of the nation of Israel. Go ahead. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's mm -hmm. and he hath set the world upon them. He has done what? And he hath set the world upon them. And he has set the world upon them. This whole earth belongs to us. Watch this. Give me the book of 2nd Ezra 6. 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 54. Let's start there. We're going to read down. 2nd Ezra 6 verse 54. 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 54. Mm -hmm. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. Come on. Of him come we all. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. Israelites, come on. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, mm -hmm. because thou madest the world for our sakes. Because thou did what? Because thou madest the world for our sakes. Because thou madest the world for our sakes. The whole earth was made for the Israelites. Now that's heavy right there. Read that again. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 55. Read. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, Read. because thou madest the world for our sakes. Mm -hmm. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Read it again for me. Something I want. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 55. Mm -hmm. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. The whole earth was made for us. That's what we read in First Samuel when it says... Yeah, and he set the world upon them. The world was given to us. I'll give an example. Second Ezra, I'll prove that thing. Second Ezra 7, verse 46. Read that. Next chapter over. 
Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 46. Come on. I answered then and said, This is my first and last saying, mm. that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam. You see that thing? The earth. Adam was given the earth. The black woman just came and just messed that whole thing up. Read that thing again. Could you imagine? Adam, listen, Adam was a god on this earth. Hmm? He says, everybody envied that brother. He came the woman, this black ashy demon. Read that thing again. Second Genesis, chapter 7, verse 46. Go ahead. I answered then and said, mm -hmm. this is my first and last saying, that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam, mm -hmm. or else when it was given him, to have restrained him from sinning. You see that thing? He is repeating it again. It would have been better not to have given the earth unto Adam. Adam was given the whole earth and his generation after him. Or else, when it was given him, Adam was given the whole earth. Okay? Obadiah verse 21. Obadiah verse 21. Mm -hmm. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion right? to judge the Mount of Esau. Mm -hmm. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. You see that thing? And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. But the saviors will come upon will come up on Mount Zion to judge Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Watch this. Give me the book of Daniel, chapter 7. Okay. Give me Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. Hmm. Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. Come on. But the saints of the most high shall mm. take the kingdom. No, I shall ask for it. Shall take the kingdom. We're not going to ask for nothing. The Lord, remember in Isaiah 41 verse 15, he says, I'm going to make you a new sharp threatening instrument with teeth. Okay? We're going to take the kingdom. We're not going to beg for nothing. On this day, no begging on this day. Don't nobody going to beg for nothing. We're going to take what's ours. Because this earth was given to us. This whole earth was, we dictate what happens on this earth. Right now, we don't got that power, but we're getting it there. The Lord is getting us, our minds together. He's getting ourselves, we're getting ourselves right before the Lord returns. Read that thing again, verse 18. Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. Read. But the saints of the Most High shall take mm -hmm. the kingdom. Gima, come on. And possess the kingdom forever. Uh -huh. Even forever and ever. Mm, that's some heavy stuff. It sounds like outcast. You know that, that song? Forever, forever, ever, ever. Read that thing again. <laughs> verse 18. Daniel chapter 7 verse 18. Read. But the saints of the Most High shall take the Come kingdom. On. Read. And possess the kingdom forever. Even forever and ever. Now read verse 27 now. Verse 27. Mm-hmm. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. Meaning the whole earth. Given. Under the whole heaven, meaning the whole earth. The kingdom, meaning rulership, and dominion to dominate all these nations with the rod of iron. And the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven, meaning on the whole earth. Read. Shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. How is it going to be given? We're going to take it. Go ahead. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Mm. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. All the nations are going to serve and obey the king of Jacob. Go ahead. Verse 28. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. Hitherto is the end of the matter. So Daniel is saying, this is, the, this is the whole objective of this Bible. The kingdom and the greatness of the, the dominion the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. Meaning the whole objective of the Most High God is to do this thing right here. To take the kingdom and give it to the saints. The saints will rule forever and ever. Okay, come on. Verse 28 again. Daniel chapter 7 verse 28. Right. Hitherto is the end of the matter. Mm -hmm. As for me, Daniel, my cogitation, my, my thoughts. My thoughts, my cogitations means my thoughts. Come on. My cogitations much troubled me. Mm -hmm. And my countenance changed in me. Come on. But I kept the matter in my heart. 
But he says, I kept the matter in my heart. It comforted me. Now, I'm going to end that last right here. Okay, all praise to the Most High. Let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, for laying his life down for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that. Amen. All